everybody. Welcome to another episode of Flavor 2. No easy buckets analysis by asshole. Water cooler commentary for your sports needs. I am Andrew Schultz. I'm here for Akash Singh. Yeah. Kaz is uh, en route, but uh, we have to start because I got to go to a uh, basketball game. I got my shit. My man is committed to these basketball games, Bro. dog. He treats us like he gets paid. I do. Yo, you no, are I never get paid late. emotionally, son. Real I talk, do. you're like, yo, I cannot... But Cass is like, yeah. Cass like has meetings for the podcast, yeah, yeah. and then he's like, yo, man, you got to move that shit, because I got, I got a pickup game Hurry up, where we wear jerseys. Yeah, I got, <laughs> I mean, there's refs, B. Yo, like, see, it's, a, it's a fucking professional's league. Son. It's a bunch of people making six figures. That's, who, that's a lot. Doing other things, who yeah. are like, let's play basketball for yeah. fun. No, absolutely. It's adult recess. It's adult recess. You're, everything that, that you're saying is I know, I know. Right. And, I, and it's the most important part of my week. But, well, listen, to your point. The most important part of my week. To your point. Yeah. What do kids look forward to in school? Recess. It's the only time they don't want to cut down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. This is what I have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is my outlet. There's one thing that I get to do throughout the week yeah, that isn't, man. you know, work related. It, it, I get a release. I just want to let you know, I'm leaving early. Not so I could make the game just barely. So I could get my stretches, stretches in, I so I could run around the gym, so I could do layup lines. I want to put up at least 50 shots from different parts of the of the court. Like, uh, I, I hoard a basketball. I bring my own basketball. My basketball's in my bag right there. You don't shoot with anybody? I, first of all, I get my dribbles in. I got to get my dribbles in. I don't. I try to not you shoot really with anybody. You really Steph Curry this. Bro, I don't play. If it was up to me, they wouldn't touch my basketball. But I reluctantly pass them if I miss and the whole thing. But I need repetition constantly right, to right, stay right. in the game. Right. So that's why I'm going to do it. Listen. This is very important to me. What do you have outside of this? You have you have what do you, you have stand up, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You have um fighting with your girlfriend. You have That's a good one. Yeah, and calling and talking to your mom on the phone. My mom doesn't call me. So I have <laughs> basketball. You know what I mean? Yeah, my mom Not calls me one. every day. And it's gotten to the point where if she doesn't call me, I'm like, who the fuck does she think she is? Did my mom die? I get worried. And then I call her like, I was worried sick about you. When my mom texts me, I get worried sick. (laughs) The first thing I think is, what happened to dad? (laughs) Is dad okay? Everything's good with dad? (laughs) I literally got a text. It was touching right now. My mom just texted me. I, I didn't even read the whole one. What a piece of shit I am. We have not seen you in a long time. We miss you. Any chance of getting together soon? We understand you're terribly busy, so don't feel guilty. We love you and miss you, mom and dad. Oh, that shit was beautiful. That's amazing, bro. man. That's amazing. Yo, that right? Alex called beautiful. over from the from the from the computer. You sound like a shitty ass son. Yo, this is I'm, white people, though, I'm man. I, my mom right white now, people's right. relationship with their put her on speaker. His I, mom is it's hysterical because like, Italians and like Jews, they have like a really special relationship. You know what I mean? But like Scottish moms, they're a little different. Mom. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All of a sudden, my phone's working. Well, it listen, wasn't working yesterday. It, it was. It wasn't working yesterday. Well, look, I'm I'm recording the, the sports podcast right now, and the guys were they were ripping me because they said I wasn't being a good son and I was neglecting you guys. And I just want to tell you I love you and and you oh. you inspire me and I think that you're amazing and I wish that you called me more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mrs. Cameron. This is Akash, by the way. Mom? She hung up on you, dog. Well, that's, <laughs> that's my relationship with my mom. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. our relationship in a nutshell yeah, right she there. She hung up on you, fam. Oh, my God. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, yo. if I'm ever hard on these yo. hoes, y'all know why. It ain't my fault. Oh, that's the realest thing he's ever said. That's the realest thing he's ever said. God damn. Oh, my God. I tried, Ma. I tried. Oh, my God. I hope you're oh all right, Ma. God. You know, my mom's phone probably on 1%. Look at me making excuses for it. She was like, sorry, son, was just re-watching the news. Uh, <laughs> did you say re-watching? <laughs> yeah, we saw it, but I wanted to see it again because uh, that was more interesting than talking to you about your podcast. Oh, man. My mom, you've read my, my mom literally. So your mom calls me more than my mom calls me. <laughs> Yo, my mom is kind of tight at you. Got... She sent you a Christmas text, didn't get a text back, and she was like, I don't know son, what I did to Andrew. Son, son, you want to know some real shit? Yeah. I got your mom's text. Right. No, this I, there's a reason for this. You a shitty son to two moms. No, no, there's a reason for this. There's a reason for it. It's me. It's really me. <laughs> it's really me. It's, I'm glad you got fucked in the ass on there's John. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for it. Yo. So, look, there's a... There's a... No, there's something... There was something exactly that happened. No, I was having like a really... Bad Christmas Day. 
Really? It was like a dark, dark Christmas day. Mm. And I don't think I was responding to anybody. And like, I didn't even get my family gifts and shit. Like I came back the next day and it was better. And I, and I, you know, but it was dark and it was, and I remember getting her text and I didn't know the number because I didn't have your mom's phone saved. Okay. Problem number one. Um, can't be putting your mom's name in my phone. Son. That's disrespectful. It's not. I'm supposed to put her in with all the other shorties, bro. Is your mom in your phone book? No. <laughs> <laughs> How am I disrespecting my mom? I put it in as Larry's piece. <laughs> you know, your, your ex is in my phone still in my phone as andrew's wifey i should i'm just sorry delete about at this that. point yeah <laughs> just delete at this point but uh but no no in all seriousness fuck what was your mom what's what uh, i can't tell you the exact number but it's yeah a man i felt bad about that it's a what it's 469 area code. it's a 469 yeah i know i know fuck man i feel bad about that i'm sorry she I'm was sorry. she was sad i know but I'm, usually i'm tell me i was I'm like not. i was like i'll talk to him she's like no don't Tell me I'm not, oh my God. But look, I usually, what did I she usually say? am texting. Text, Read the message. She said, wish you a very happy new year. But she also wished me a happy Christmas and I didn't respond. I'm calling she, her. She texted you on I'm New Year's, dog? Her. I'm calling What's her. What's going on? Put I'm this on speaker. Her, Put I'm this on speaker. Her. I'm calling her. How you say mom again in Hindi? Amma. Amma. Yeah. That's how we say it, at least. Um, Amma, hey, this is Andrew. I'm doing a podcast right now with your your son, Akash. And um, I just wanted to call and say I'm incredibly sorry for not getting back to you. That is so disrespectful and so rude. I apologize. Yeah, no. What? Say that again. Yeah, I just I'm so sorry. I was having a really bad Christmas. I was I was feeling pretty down, I think, on Christmas, and I think that's why I didn't get back to you. Now New Year's I have no excuse. So <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but but I, I really I I'm really so grateful that you reached out. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, you're welcome. And have good happy life and you are the best person my son can be around. We almost highly of you. Oh so, uh, that's oh, really that's really nice. Okay. He was just making fun of me for uh, a homosexual scene in a <laughs> TV show that I did. But I do trust that what he says to you is true. I do. <laughs> no, he has a lot of, uh, he brags about you a lot. I do. Oh, and, I do. So, well, just know I do the exact same about him when he's not around. Never to his face. I would yeah. never give him that glory. Yeah. But um, when You're not supposed not... to tell him. I'm a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I love you thank and I hope you. everything's good, okay? Love you, Amma. See, man, that's beautiful right there. That's minority oh, moms right there. That's right. My mom just texted me back. Yo, fam, busy. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, oh, this is my mom. Text me. You tell your friends you are a great son and have always been. Thanks for the call. It made me feel so warm inside and full of love for you. God, moms, dog. Yo, moms the best, are the best, man. son. Yo. Yo, moms are the best, bro. Yo, Yo this is the difference between moms and women. I've been saying this. <laughs> I have a bit about this. Do you? Yeah, I what say. I'm not. Listen, moms are to be. We talked about this bit. I haven't worked it out, but like moms are. I put moms on a pedestal. Right. They're not even human beings. They're angels walking the earth. Mm -hmm. Women's who haven't had kids are yeah. just us. Right, they're You're just, just me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't respect me. I'm gonna respect you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a big workaround. But it is beautiful. Oh, thank you, mom. Oh, thank you, mom. Mom's the best, most selfless, angelic creatures God ever created. All right, I love you. Yo, text really improved our relationship. <laughs> For real, it did. It really did. Now we be texting all the time. Look at that <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> My mom just learned that she didn't have to like sign the text. <laughs> like she used to write the whole text and be like, "Mom." <laughs> like she was worried, like when it got thrown out to text land, like someone else it could go. <laughs> Yo, we gotta we gotta do a Mother's Day episode with all yes! the moms. I've talked about this. Get the moms Bring all in. the moms on, and mom sports opinions are always the funniest. Oh God, that'd be great. I yeah. remember I was rooting. I I never rooted for Kobe. I always hated Kobe. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, I respect him, but I couldn't root for the Lakers. Sure. So I was watching the finals: Sixers, Lakers. And I'm rooting for the Sixers. And my mom is, like, trying to be supportive. And she's saying things like, Shaq is too big. He's cheating. And, like, that's the only opinion she has. He's too big. He's cheating. He's cheating. He shouldn't be that big. And I was like, this is adorable. <laughs> I would kick her out the room so fast, yo. I mean, yo, stop ruining the game, mom. Well, you want to, but it's just so adorable. She's just sitting there, nah, four foot eleven, just looking.
No, moms are special. Moms are special people. I remember hearing like, maybe we'll save this for like when, when our moms come on. But I remember asking my mom like, what was like when she just had me, like you know when you're a kid, like what was it like? And uh, she was like, well, you know, um, I hired a babysitter, and um, but I didn't trust her. <laughs> <laughs> because one day I came home and you had you had a wee wee rash on your on your uh, on your arse, right? <laughs> I go, I had, a, I had a what? I had a rash on my ass. She said, a wee rash on your ass. I didn't trust the babysitter. So one day she took you to the park, and I followed her. <laughs> I follow I followed her to the park, and I and I hid behind a bush. Watching all the kids in the park, and I understand now how crazy that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Just a wee Scottish lady staring at kids from behind a bush. But I needed to make sure that she wasn't hurting my baby. <laughs> and I think I figured out what she was doing. This 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 babysitter, she would just she would just put you in the she would just put you in the swing, and she wouldn't have swing you. <laughs> she would just leave you there. <laughs> should leave you in the swing, Andrew. That's, that's criminal. You should bro, be locked up for that. Bro, for real. That's I was a like, fucking criminal that's offense. why you had the rash on your artist Because you were sitting in the wee <laughs> swing for hours. You were sitting there for hours, Andrew. Because my knees were getting tired when I was watching you from the bush. I go, I go, Mom, why'd you leave me there for hours? <laughs> you could have stepped in like... Cause stepped in after like thirty minutes, yeah. like yo, why don't you get a to get a push on the swing? She was like, she's like, I did think about that, Andre. <laughs> but there's part of me that wanted to know how long she would have left you there in the swing, and I couldn't even believe it. It was hours you were in the swing. Oh man. Yeah. Yo. I love you, mom. Your mom, your mom sounds a hell of like Conor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help but notice that. <laughs> Oh, I gotta get a good Connor down. I forgot that I could do voices. I mean, when I was early in comedy, I would do like accents a little bit more, and then incredible. I I got away from it, and I and I can do them a little it bit. It was incredible. Back into some, some voices. You, you used to, I remember Andrew used to do a joke about where he would just live in this character, this Puerto Rican character, for five ten minutes on end. And I know people are gonna want to be offended, but I'm telling you, yeah. when Puerto Ricans were there, I've never seen laughter like this in my life. They it, would it fucking was a, the die. The character was the Puerto Rican guy on a subway who plays his. Um, he's making fun of how skinny your jeans were. Oh yeah, he's making fun of how skinny my jeans were. But while he was playing his music on his cell phone on speaker, <laughs> like, <laughs> and this was like a big deal because now everybody got the headphones and like earbuds. But like back in the day, if your phone could play music, it was kind of like it Bro, was like show still, offy. The Latinos still did that shit. Maybe now even, but now like still goes until down. a few years ago, for sure. I would look at that because I moved to New York when iPhones were out, and everybody had iPhones. A couple years in, and when you did that joke. I remember laughing because I'd be like, what the fuck is this? We don't need to hear this. You got headphones. Yo, it's, it is. It, you know, it's funny. Someone stole that joke from me and did it in England. Really? And it was a comic that, this English comic that I like took around a little bit in the city. And um, I only know that he took the joke because he would compliment me on that joke. And then I saw him post a review of himself from a show he did in England, like at a festival. And they commented on that joke. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, you've had more stuff lifted than me. But You've I've, had some shit lifted. Yeah, I've, I've had some shit lifted too. But they always compliment you before they steal it, and I don't get it. It's it's interesting. It's interesting how that, that's some brave shit. Be it's comics are sociopaths, man. Facts. They'll be like, "Yo, that's funny," or they'll see you do it, do well with it, and then you, like you'll know they saw it. You'll talk at the show, yeah. and then they'll just do a slight variation <laughs> of it, of the like joke. the slightest <laughs> variation. Yeah. When do you think a joke is stolen? That's another thing. It's a good question. Um, I don't think that if two people have the same idea, it's necessarily stolen. Okay. Because you and I have come up with similar ideas right. plenty of times. Right. I don't think that you're stealing. I hope, would hope you don't think that I'm right. ever stealing from you. Now, this could be because we're just having conversations all the time. We both have an idea sparked, and we also right. go on stage. And I don't go on stage with things that are perfectly formed. You know, right. It's just an idea, and it goes there. But, like, I'll have same ideas as, as, as Chris Rock. Right. Before, like, I like the shit that's not even in his special. I yeah. have said shit at the cellar, and then I'm watching him at the cellar after me, yeah. and then he'll say the same. Right, right, right. You know, like I remember I had I had that joke, like I um I would never hit a woman, but I hit her back. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't even do that. 
<laughs> no, no, no. But uh, I, so uh, our and and Rock is a joke. I don't know if it's in his new special, but you know, said something. I would never hit a woman. You know what I mean? But if uh, Oprah hit me. I'd knock that bitch out. <laughs> <laughs> no, funnier. <laughs> right. He'll do that. He'll have a similar idea to you and then and the just funniest make it way possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just incredible. Now, yeah. he would never take that from me. Right. We're just both thinking about an idea. Yeah. And then yeah. it ended up happening. What's up, baby? Yo, Yo. ironically, we haven't really spoken about anything <laughs> sports related yet. <laughs> You ground us in sports. We're just talking about moms and how great they are. We called both our moms. Kaz just walked in. So anybody. Yeah. The moms people, are this shit, man. Kaz walked in looking svelte as fuck. My man out here losing weight. <laughs> like Yo. fucking Luther Vandross. Yeah. Or skinny right. Vandross well, over here. Black turtleneck. Look at that. <laughs> slim season. Black is slimming. Hey, oh, there we go. I see that. How you guys doing, man? You got sorry, the cuts on the wrong that. side of your hair, man. You need the camera angle to see oh, the cuts. Shit. Yeah, next time. Fucking, no. Next time. It was, next it was time. a confidence cut. It was a confidence cut. Hey, man, we all need those. Sometimes I trim my pubes for that reason. Real hey, talk. <laughs> I do. Sometimes I'm feeling dead. There's certain does things it, that I'm does feeling. Does it like equate like depth perception? Like when you trim the pubes? Not or even nah. that. It uh, makes me. Uh, it's like when like uh, like um, goth chicks cut themselves. <laughs> Wait, just for the throw? It's a control that's thing. So... It's like I'm controlling something in my life. I think that's what it comes down to. I gotta list. Like I gotta list the shit I do to like keep my nah, mental health. Nah, nah. There's there's when, feeling more put together is a confidence thing. Absolutely. Yeah. You get a new outfit, whatever. It's yeah. a new outfit for your yeah. dick. So yeah. so I got it. <laughs> So I, I get this new outfit for my dick, and then I um I feel a little better. I maybe clean my house. You know, there's a certain yeah, I right. do a little cleanup. Right, right, right. Give a little trim. Shave Give a little, my yeah. shave my face. Comb it's like my spring hair. Cleaning. Yeah. Feel great. Feel I great about it. myself. Yeah. Okay, let's get into some sports. All right, let's get Literally, some sports, the last man. time you left, we all, we didn't talk. We talked about relationships. Remember, like yeah. a month ago. Yeah, you yeah. Now you're late, and we haven't. You are the only reason we talk about sports. <laughs> This shouldn't even be a sports podcast at the end of the day. It's just like, fuck it, man. Let's just go. We're opening it up to everybody, yo. We're opening it up to everybody. No, not for nothing. Like, we did, uh, we just did Brilliant Idiots last week. Mad people hit us on DMs. It's like, yo. You guys should do more than just sports, man. This was amazing talk. So, Akash, Akash listens to this, um... Well, maybe you, you tell us. You you listen to this sports program. I listen to a, a radio station called yeah. The Ticket in Dallas. It's all sports. I saw and you then, tweet about the, this. And today. the morning show in particular, so fucking funny. Just three middle-aged white dudes, but one of them, they were resolving to lose weight. This is just like, they, at the beginning of the show, they just talk like this every uh -huh. time. And then they get into sports. And they were talking about, what are your resolutions? And one of them said, lose weight. And then the, the other guy, he's in shape. So he suggested the other two take up mall walking. <laughs> and like, you guys got to do it together. I promise it'll get coverage. News stations will cover it. Yeah. Dog, they, so the one guy who was reluctant was like, all right, fine, I'll do it. They did it today. A fucking, I posted the picture on Twitter. A horde of listeners <laughs> is following them like a fucking army. And they're just talking. And then they're 20 feet behind them, a horde of people yeah. just following, taking like pictures. Like Forrest Gump. Yes, <laughs> dog, it's like, like it's Forrest incredible. Gump. <laughs> it's the fucking, and that's, I think about them with this podcast a lot. We don't have to talk sports. We have a very good chemistry. Yeah. And uh, just, I feel like our listeners are the same, like just a little mobilized army. That's how I want February 7th to look like, man. Yo. I want, are, great I want segue. motherfuckers segue. to be, oh, even oh though, shit, even people. Even though it's <laughs> February 9th. Great oh, my bad. February 9th, whatever. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. yeah, no, that's what I want ah, February 9th to look like, seven? man. I'm pretty sure it's 7th. Which day is it? The 7th or the 9th? Oh, you can look uh, that up, Alex. That'd be dope. I'm pretty sure it's the 7th. Anyway, yeah. Well, we got to figure it out because, <laughs> because the graphic is... graphic don't say that That's shit. not what it is. But anyway, that's that's how we roll in Flagrant 2, man. We just do live edits on the show on the fly. Bro, we're... On the fire. Hey, we're independent. We're growing. This is a three-month-old podcast, It is February 7th. Though, yeah. yeah, We got we to gotta switch that out. It's February 7th. We got, Listen, we're figuring it out. We've been saying out. seven. This is the only 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And we were, our, our mom talk was so riveting to fuck it. Anyway, February mm -hmm. 7th, 2018, we're going to be at the Highline Ballroom. Come through. Fuck with us. Yes. And, uh, but, but basically why I want I was, the ticket to look like a fucking uh, a kiddie pool. Compared to Compared to our show. I want that shit sold <laughs> out. Even if you're not from New York, dog. If you come, if you come to the Highline Ballroom mm -hmm. outside of New York, like I will personally pull you on stage. And shout you out. Don't say that because you know how many people are already planning to come? I, I don't care. We'll make it a thing, dude. Now, nah, like, they got to prove, and it can't be fucking New Jersey. Yeah, they not New Jersey. They nah, took if a you flight to flight, get here. If you took flight, if you took Amtrak, bring, bring you took some real shit. Yeah, yeah bring the bring ticket Bring a stub. ticket. Bring a ticket stub. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Akash and I will make sure you get your, uh, shouts. You get, you get your shouts out and your, um, your special, you know. But the reason I ticket. asked Akash to talk about the tickets is because they do start off every podcast just talking about generic shit and then they get yeah. into sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, 
and I liked it. We've kind of done that in the last few podcasts. Yeah, Sometimes and people like it. Other shit that you want to get off your chest. Absolutely. People like it. Now, are yeah, you wearing man. all black for some like Oprah shit? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I honestly, fam, my man out here oh, part man. of it. Oh shit, all of oh, us we're all in all black. black. So. <laughs> yeah, we support the <laughs> Me Too movement. <laughs> Shout out to Me Too. You know what I mean? That's this was totally This was on playing. purpose. <laughs> we care about you hoes. I mean women. We care about y'all sluts. So what y'all gotta do is stop getting fingered and grabbed oh and your God. titties touched at work. Guys, That's disrespectful please. unless you got some big ass fucking titties and you're not trying to understand it. Uh, yeah, shout out to Oprah. <laughs> Did y'all watch any of the Globes? Yo, I've only Alex, watched the speech. I didn't on watch Instagram. any of that shit. All I watched yeah. was the speech because Alex posted the whole shit on his fucking Instagram lives. <laughs> his Instagram lives is looking like period marks. You know how they. <laughs> shit was the lips. Those, those shits was so tiny, bro. Oh, Not even Instagram live. It was, oh, uh, it was the story. The story. He put on his oh, story Jesus. and the little story bars were looking so tiny. Yeah. That shit was mad long. Well, Alex, but... you, do, you, you have a, do you have a daughter? You have a girl? No? Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Why don't I like Oprah? Uh, why don't Someone you don't explain like Oprah? to me. I don't fucking like Oprah. How do you not I, like Oprah? I don't know, dog. It's something about her. Let me tell you. It story. might be me. It might be a me thing. It's got to be but you, there's bro. There's a thing that oh, I just man. find kind of like phony and self I'll, put, I'll, I'll put it like this, though. There's definitely. I, there was definitely a period where I didn't like Oprah because she didn't fuck with hip hop. And she didn't start that fucking works. with hip hop until like it was. Cool to it was profitable it was, to do so. It was so? profitable to do so. Like literally, the first rapper I think she had on her show was like Ludacris, and that was for like Fast and the Furious. <laughs> good, <laughs> some they movie. had beef. And then yeah, him and her and Luda had beef. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh wait, no, that, it was that, that's what it was. Son, it was that is good beef, that whatever. you don't fuck with hip hop. Why is that? Because you got to set the standards high. <laughs> set the standards for your people high. You think that like who's who's like the most famous like uh, Jewish person that represents the Jewish community? Uh, Seth Rogen. <laughs> I don't know, dude. You tell oh, me. I'm saying I don't you're, know. You're the Allen? closest one. I'm not Jewish. I'm not Jewish. I'm just saying. Is it Woody Allen? Because he fucks his daughter. Woody Allen not gonna oh, be the gosh. moral standard. But uh, Seinfeld. Seinfeld. I fucks Seinfeld. Maybe Seinfeld. Seinfeld. I fucks a Seinfeld like Woody Allen fucks with his daughter. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to an inappropriate degree. No, actually, <laughs> actually, here's a better. Here's a better example. Forget Jews. Nigerians, right? Okay. Would would uh Hakeem Olajuwon? No, no. Would Nigerians <laughs> would Nigerians That's be cool? <laughs> would Nigerians be cool with uh their son being a gangster rapper? Absolutely not. Unless they were mega mega. Oh, they had to be mega. But yeah, 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 but, but yeah. we're not talking about that. Would they be cool with the uh, hey? You know what I'm gonna do with my life? I'm gonna go be a gangster. Absolutely rapper. not. Like and you like you get no parental support why? off rip. Like you why have would to they be, not be cool? Because the to, standards yeah, are high, okay. and Oprah <laughs> was trying to set the standards yeah. for her people that she loves so much higher than I'm gonna sell drugs. I'm a fucking fuck bitch. I'm gonna kill strangers. And she went so hard. I don't want to hear nothing from you. You you're a failure to your family because you're not a doctor. Don't don't pull this. What? Like dog shit. No, I just don't like. I just think it's all phony, and I don't know. I, don't I know. mean, she kind of overcompensated though. Like when she finally got a rapper on, like not only was it Jay Z, but she brought him two Marcy projects. So like they had to broadcast from there. So it was like she's overcompensating for all she the years. She just wanted chaperone. She, she just <laughs> hadn't been to the hood in so long, and she don't trust Stedman to keep her safe. She's like, all right, <laughs> give me fucking Jay. Is Buster busy? Give me Jay. Let's go to Marcy. Walk around this dangerous shit. Oh man, no, but I'm, you can't like. I don't think you're like not allowed to not like Oprah, like as a black person. Can I like, tell you guys a story that's gonna make you love Oprah? Uh, tell me. So my please. dad used to work in news in Baltimore. Okay. You know who also worked in news in Baltimore? Mm. Oprah. Oprah Winfrey. Mm-hmm. That's where she was. I getting. did not know that. She was getting her start <laughs> in Baltimore, yeah. right? Now, my dad worked with a guy, and this is before Oprah was even famous at all. And this guy used to tell my dad that Oprah Winfrey. Gave the most fire. No. <laughs> no. No. And, no. In the history of the universe. Son, Yo. off the blowjobs, the guy used to say to my dad, let me tell you something. This Oprah Winfrey woman is going to be massive. Well, terrible. She is going to be I massive. I am not. I swear to God, my life, fam. Oh, no. Hey, Larry Schultz lies? No, I'm telling you. Larry I'm Schultz just making lies? Sure you're not lying. No, I'm not lying. Now. Now, I'm not touching this at all. Not today. Now, let not me today you, of all Now, let me tell you something that will make you feel comfortable. Let nope. me tell you something that will make you feel comfortable. It was consensual? Oh, absolutely. Oh, consensual. God. But what she, Oprah has spoken on uh, many times, she's spoken about how she acted out sexually because she was molested as a child. She yeah, went yeah, through yeah. sexual trauma as a child. Uh, and she acted out sexually. And, you know, she it was one of those things that she had to uh, understand about herself and where this came from, et cetera. Um, 
So it, it's this is not something that Oprah would essentially deny. Uh. You know. Now I'm not saying that one should act out sexually. I am saying that if you do, you probably give some fire. <laughs> ass. <laughs> <laughs> it better be worth forty billion dollars. Son, 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 bro. Son, yeah, no, I'm son. not. I'm not. We need a fillet drop it, whenever we say some real fillet. Fillet, great tip. Uh, I, st- I still can't do the fillet. Yeah, nah. nah never. Anyway, shout out to him, man. He went to uh, oh shout out to fillet. God. Fillet went. To I feel like every first he went to my alma mater, my high school, the Patrick School, St. Joseph, St. Patrick's. St. Patrick's. It was St. Patrick's. It was changed to the Patrick School because they literally ran out of funding. And like they were gonna close they down. Ran out of the Catholic part. Well, well <laughs> <laughs> how Jesus gave up on y'all? That's fucked up. That's the savior. So now there's just a like, public yo, cut the now. saint, baby. Like, That's we don't need funny. This. So now the Patrick Fuck. School. Now and you they, just Irish. They literally would have been shut down if it wasn't for like Kyrie Irving, Michael Kidd, Gil, Chris, all these guys that went there. Wow. And like they gave their own money to keep the school open. So shout out to Filet. He went there this week, and uh, Kyrie. Refurbished the entire gym, refurbished the entire locker room, Uh, you know, gave them, it's their first ever, like, Kyrie Irving school, so, like, they have, like, the Kyrie Irving branding on the jerseys, the sneakers, all that type of shit, so, shout out to him, shout out to doing good. Bad investment, yo. (laughs) Why is that a bad investment? if the business is failing, you're going to inject some money into it. Yeah. How is it going to make more money? It's going to, well, first of all. God didn't bring money in. (laughs) <laughs> you, you gotta understand Patrick though. is gonna bring you, money in. It's you, not an investment. It's a ch- it's a tax write off. I mean, most but in the then, most practical. All sense, I'm saying is wise. he would have but to continue. Thing. He would have to continue contributing in order to keep it open. You gotta or understand. Or you gotta though. find a donor. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. or you gotta find a donor base. Unless it became it stopped being Catholic and became a public school, and now it gets money from the city. Well, it's a private school. It's a private institution now. Oh, but I'll tell you this, though. I went to St. Patrick's, and yeah. St. Patrick's was a shitty school. Like, it was super <laughs> shitty. Like, it literally was three floors, three rooms on each floor, one shitty basketball court, and the only thing that kept it open, that kept it alive, was that the basketball program was massive. Like, we had... Oh, so it makes money for even high school? Yeah. yeah people yeah, pay yeah. to I watch mean, like, high school people, basketball? Yes. Like, people... Like, is we had a... Ky- this is a school Kyrie transferred Ky- to. Yeah, he transferred to yeah, the school. Yeah, yeah. his junior and senior year. And, uh, you know, we had a Jordan sponsorship, so, like, you know, Oh, we had, you were getting money. Yeah, well, the school... Oh, yeah, the school was... Yeah, definitely I get it. So it, now so. Nike sponsored the school, mm-hmm. and then the whole thing, and mm-hmm. the players got to go to Nike colleges. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then when you go to... uh, you, When you go to these tournaments, you know, outside of the state or whatever oh they like, pay you whatever. to play in they it. pay you to play in that a lot of the schools get that type of money you and know now I mean? since you're a the... Kyrie school everybody's gonna want Kyrie mm-hmm. da, 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 da. I mm-hmm. see the whole thing so but, it's, it's but a, Rick Pitino's an asshole <laughs> just Rick Pitino nobody else does it That's I see it. how it's, it is it's a, it's a, it's a man being as somebody who like sat front row literally because mm-hmm. I didn't get a shit ton of playing time in high, in my in my high school career right. <laughs> like literally seeing how you know politics. what got you some more playing time? What? If you gave some fire. <laughs> <head>. <laughs> You're a fucking terrible person. Oh, we got person. all that airtime, bro. You're a terrible person. I'm That's just saying, you were I don't think that would have got you playing time. <laughs> if there's one time. I don't of... think good head would have got you playing time. At yeah, a Catholic please. institution? Okay, oh, fair You enough. give up that booty, you're going to get crunch time at least. <laughs> Come on, Crunch now. time is a good choice of words. I don't. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say I didn't get any playing time at all. I played sparingly. I thought you were gonna say I don't want. I didn't get fucked. I, <laughs> I didn't get. I, I was I I fucked all time. I'm like no. Like I didn't get blowjobs. <laughs> you know, it was just a money thing there. No, but um, yeah, man. Like if you see just how I don't want to say corrupt, but like how unfair the entire grassroots basketball system is. Whereas, you know, all this money is getting exchanged and all these people are getting something out of it yeah. except for the player. The players are literally walking billboards for Nike, for Adidas. It's for communism, man. It, 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 it's, yeah. It's communism. In a way. <laughs> well, what's in the a other way. one where it's just the businesses make money? Totalitarianism? No. What's the one? You know, it's, it's basically communism only like the. I don't think I passed that part in the business. They say it's what America is. Yeah. Uh, corporatocracy care. or something like that where just you the big businesses start. have my whatever. you're more well read than me we Fine. tried communism we gave it, we gave it a shot we tried yeah, to be yeah. smart today oh, yeah. and we just... suck my dick basketball <laughs> <laughs> anyway suck my oh. dick like Oprah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs>
No, First of all, we're talking with Tyler you know, too much about. Anytime I tell somebody, anytime I tell a story to somebody, they get all offended like they don't want Oprah to be good at sucking dick. Oprah is the best at TV. She's the best <laughs> at interviewing. She's the best at owning a magazine. And she's so, the best at sucking <laughs> that dick. Today of all days. Why wouldn't days, she be the best? Of all days. We cannot what? talk about Oprah sucking dick. Today. Oprah that sucks such a good dick that the guys wouldn't even say me too. That's how good. <laughs> it would start out as a me too. And then just be like, yeah. I mean, to be fair, this was the premise of a classic Dave Ch- uh, Chappelle show skit. What he say? When when uh, he married, oh, when he tried when to, you fly, got, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wife, you get, he got yeah. a pregnant, he tried to get a pregnant for the money. Yeah, you I mean, don't want the realness. You, I, hey, I, I might, I would have, I climbed that. Oh, of course. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, obviously. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not touching that at all. I mean, well, I did a little bit. But no. Whatever. It's just, yeah. it's just all I'm saying that greatness doesn't, you know, greatness runs across all Greatness has no limits. Lanes, and it has mm-hmm. no limits. You know what I mean? True. Absolutely no limits. Like, it's hard to think what Oprah would be bad at. What would she be bad at? Not head. Not head at all. <laughs> That's one thing she's not bad at. Gulp, gulp. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why people care so much about Oprah being bad at sucking dick. You can't no, no, talk like, about. Oh my god! If, no, if no, 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 no. Notice there's a distinct difference. The black dudes in the room really want Oprah Alex, to be save me. bad at sucking save dick. Me. First of all, this is why. This is why. No, real talk. This is why black women are about ten. Like like Patrice O'Neal said, ten years behind white women when it comes to freaky shit. Because you black dudes oppress them when they're good at sexual Ooh, things. No, I, Patrice O'Neal. Just, what did Patrice say? He said, "Black, yeah, black yeah. women are ten years." I'm just behind. noticing that you quoted Patrice because you know, as a white dude, you can't say some shit like that. So God damn know. right, I said that shit. Come I know on. I'm not calling you out for it. I'm just noticing. Listen, well, you did call him out. <laughs> Listen, I got, I got to give credit. I got to give credit where credit's due. All I'm saying is, we got to stop <laughs> oppressing black women sexually. We got to let them be sexually liberated. Get out there, do all the things you want to do, including sucking dick. I ho- I hope I hope that's let how Oprah be your model. I hope that's how our audience takes. That. First of all, imagine <laughs> Oprah sucks good dick, right? And your girl. Doesn't suck good dick. You no, could be why, like, why? don't you want to be like Oprah, bitch? What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, she's out here with TV shows and still sucks good dick, and you just out here not sucking good dick with no TV shows. Like, maybe the reason you don't got no TV shows is because you ain't got no dick sucking skills. Yo, I'm, bow- I'm bowing out of this. <laughs> Tell yeah. me, someone please sense. change the subject. Kev, we are comedians. <laughs> Yo. Let us rock. Stop making it uncomfortable. I know I'm what you do. Sa- I love what you do. We need you. But if this man's talking about Oprah sucking dick, you let him rock. All right? That's what the fuck we do as comedians. All right? We Yo. talk that shit. Real talk. Oh I'm just, God. all that's all I'm saying is I think a woman should be able to do whatever she wants on her body. You're right. You are right. We do not silence free speech here. (laughs) Yeah. In the same way, he does not shame Oprah for sucking great dick. Exactly. We do not shame Andrew for talking about Oprah sucking great dick. Matter of fact, if Oprah was right here, I would ask her. (laughs) I'd be like, yo, I heard a rumor (laughs) back in the day that your head game is fire. Let me tell you this. She'd be like, you better believe it. Oprah will have the snipers hit you before you even hit the door. (laughs) (laughs) Before before you even stand up, you just... (laughs) <laughs> she just be down She'll for the fly in eight kids from one what? of the schools she saved. This is a wi- this is a windowless room. Eight little African kids come in. <laughs> she shoot the dart in my neck. Where the fuck these kids come out? They start saying the ABCs like, "Yo, y'all are real good in English." This is a windowless room. She will find a sniper to take your ass out. <laughs> I'm like, how the fuck did they get fucking snipers in a Somebody windowless pops booth? Pops open the sound panel, like, start taking us out. It drops down the ceiling like Mission oh, Impossible. Fuck. All I'm saying, it's a great. <laughs> compliment what I'm saying. We gotta <laughs> stop acting like being good at fellatio is is something bad or something reserved just for whores or something like that. It's not <laughs> no, a special it is not. beautiful act. It, no, it is not. You know what I mean? I'm not slut shaming out here. <laughs> I mean, think about the other way around. What if somebody was like, yo, um, Martin Luther King was great at eating pussy. Do you think we'd be like, chill! I mean, chill, stop talking about Martin Luther King I mean, eating Martin pussy! Martin Luther King did get a lot of ass, though. He did get a lot of ass. Yeah, but we wouldn't we wouldn't go, oh my God, how dare you say Martin Luther King is good at eating pussy? But you do understand like the male and the female dynamic. Like that's a that's a thing. That is a thing, man. In 2018, like, there is no such thing as gender. <laughs> oh fuck. That's a great point. That's a you great know point. All I'm saying is I'm not about to oppress women and their sexuality, you know what I'm saying? Just like I'm not about to oppress men. If you're out here eating good pussy, fellas, that's what's up. Now, I don't respect you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you, your stroke game should be so good, you don't even gotta eat pussy. Listen, um, uh, mm. 
Some people just speak like for it. yourself, Chad. Yeah, like, I just <laughs> like it, dog. I'm like, I'm like, is that? Am I not not allowed to just like eating pussy? Like, is that what? <laughs> nah, I just oh, play it. I like eating pussy. God damn! I'm like, I know you. I know you ain't bullshitting right now. Nah, God damn. I love eating pussy. Everything's cool. Like We're talking about some goddamn sports, please. Yeah, yeah let's go. Jesus Christ! Right. Legitimately, this is a huge sports weekend, and we spend 35 <laughs> minutes <laughs> talking about bro. everything else. We're gonna go through a whole podcast dumb. with no sports. Fuck it. Talk. All right, yeah, fuck yeah, it. Yeah. Let's. Uh, That's gonna happen. God damn. Yeah. Uh, uh, the playoffs. Let's talk about Cam Newton's uh, concussion. Yeah, or, fuck. Or oh, you got a concussion? Oh, you didn't see what well, happened. The only good game all weekend. <laughs> yeah. Unless you count Titans Chiefs, which I'm not going to. Which is garbage. But yeah. yeah, the only good game all weekend still has that cloud hanging over. The NFL cannot get right right now. Yeah. Wow, what happened? All right, so boom. Uh, it was the Saints were pretty much dominating the game for, for most of the, uh, most of the uh, game. And then uh, I guess Cam Newton came, and they, they started making a little bit of a comeback. Oh, my God. Yes, no. yes, we do. <laughs> Time out. Oh, that's respectful right there. There you go. That's what's Please, up. Please, God, yes. We love you, Oprah. Love you, oh. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the speech. I'm Stop. quiet over here. <laughs> I don't know yet, Oprah. Yeah. So, yeah, no. Nah, tell Cam... me you don't want to see her just take Stop. the glasses Stop. off. Stop. <laughs> Stop. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you got so much <laughs> Put that hair up a little hair. <laughs> Yo, it's like Oprah's their mom, dog. Yo, it's so she weird. is. She we, is. We were if all we were right. talking about Martin Luther King eating pussy, we we're like, you wouldn't want to see Martin undo that tie I a little would, bit. That makes me uncomfortable. Um, button a shirt. Oh, I'm saying, I'd be like, hell yeah, Martin, go do what the fuck you do, man. You're the greatest speaker ever. Damn well, you know how to do more things with your mouth than just speak. <laughs> I'd be all about it. All I'm saying is we're not going to be sexist on this show and treat women differently than we would treat men. We're going to empower these ladies. So Cam Newton had a concussion, right? <laughs> <laughs> he got hit in the head <laughs> real hard. He got hit in the head. You know yeah. who else be hitting the head? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right, so Cam Newton got a concussion. Yeah, so he got, he got, he got knocked out uh, pretty hard on a, on, a, on a second hit on one of those drives that he was uh, trying to win the game at. Uh, he walks off the field. He collapses, right? Yes. Everybody looks at him and we're like, oh, God, he absolutely has a concussion. Yeah. That they, they give him the eye thing. He looks like he's at, had like eight-fifths of Hennessy to the face. Like, he <laughs> yeah. looks fucked up. Okay. Fucked up, right? A couple plays later, he's right back in the game. The next drive. They're saying he had an eye injury, but no, he was clearly concussed. But to his credit. He comes back and throws some fucking lasers. Dimes, <laughs> like, dog. He like, dimes. And it leads me to the conclusion that black quarterbacks eat concussions like Scooby Snacks. <laughs> like it's light work. <laughs> like Russell Wilson, a couple weeks ago, clearly concussed. Mm. Clearly does not go through any concussion protocol. They look at him, they're like, mm, he's good. Sends him right back out. And does work. Goes and wins the fucking game, right? Same thing with Cam Newton. He didn't quite win the game, but he threw like three Dimes like directly after that hit, and I was like, "Holy shit, he might fuck around and win." He throws like an eighty-two yard thing. Uh, well, it was like a, a ten yard. Christian carried a fifty-six yard touchdown, t- I think. Yeah, and then the house. he had one pass on the sideline. I forget. Dude, oh, dude, it was fucking. It was I easy. mean, that Christian McCaffrey pass was easy, right? It was a yeah, but he had a pass, laser. In the yeah, next but guy. it was he sure. was in there. He was and I think the, I think did you see the grounding call? Yeah, I did see the grounding. I think call. the grounding call was borderline. I think they made the right call, but it it. They, they got fucked in by a game it. like that. You don't, you don't. It's like it's kind of like in basketball when you like you let the players finish it. Like you don't yeah. call, like you don't call a charge with like five seconds left in the game. Like right. you got an MVP storming down the field on the road. Like so, Cam is scrambling. I think it's first and ten. Yeah, and uh, he goes like to the very edge of the pocket. Like they do a, a, a red line on the replay showing where the pocket is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and you know when you're outside, he the throws pocket, it out throw of bounds, and they give it yeah, to yeah. yeah. He's, he's right on the line, and they called it grounding, lost ten yards and a down. And was it? Was yeah. he inside? The he pocket? was like. It's, on it the really line. was borderline. It really like, was literally borderline. where the line was drawn. He is on it. So was his foot over it or behind? See, that's it? what I'm saying. I think they made the right call. Oh, so they, but they it's made like, the right call. It's like real. It's like it's like calling a you know. Yeah, it's like, call, foul the it's like the calling like double dribble on LeBron James. It's like come At on, the end bro. of the playoff. Game. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like if LeBron's like on the fast break by himself and he takes that extra step that he usually takes to dunk. It's like come on, bro, just let him dunk it. Yo, that, yeah. that, that call. concussion <laughs> shit is like it ain't that bad. I had I mad concussions. I've had I think three concussions. <laughs> like dog, I, this is crazy. This is, not, this is crazy. Are you nah. like he is not here? Fam, I look like that every time I go to strip club. That's, that's no reason. <laughs> Yo, you know you know when else you look like that when you get hit. Oh, 
That's literally what he's looking at. He's like, did that just happen to me? Did that? How are you so good at so many things? <laughs> All I'm saying is that, listen, I got a con- I got multiple concussions in my life. I went to, and list. this is really embarrassing, I went to rollerblading camp. Please, no judgment. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You went to rollerblading? <laughs> Rollerblading camps. Son, I went to rollerblading camps. Did they have camps for, ro- like, you were, like, learning how to rollerblade, or you were just good at rollerblading? No, like, and aggressive just... skating. Like, oh. I tried that. Which is just too pussy. pussy. Yeah. Oh. It's whack. <laughs> I know. This shit is mad whack, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm embarrassed. Whatever, y'all. Fuck it. We're on ramps and shit. I wore big-ass knee pads. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you were, like, Tony Hawk and shit? Like, yeah, but even on... worse, because I was rollerblading, people. I wasn't even <laughs> fucking <laughs> skateboarding or nothing. Mad cool graceful. Just Hell like... yeah. <laughs> Just gliding my ass all out and shit. You leaning forward like a raptor the entire time. It's uncomfortable. Anyway, I was trying to grind this rail, right? I was by myself. I was going to f- eat. You mean uh, suck a dick? No, no, no. In this circumstance, I wasn't. I'm one of the few rollerbladers that doesn't. So I jump on the rail. Next thing I remember, my face is just in the dirt. So I hit my head and I got completely knocked out concussed, right? Uh. I got up. They helped me up. I don't even think they took me to the doctor or nothing. They took me back to the cabin where we were sleeping. I fell asleep for a little bit. And then the next day, I was out there rollerblading again. <laughs> now. So you say all that to say. So all that to you say. You go into rollerblading camp. I have no concussion bro- protocol or is, nothing like that. I was good. <laughs> I was. I went back to the rollerblading the next day. That's the well, stupidest shit I ever I was about heard. to say, like, you cannot, I can, you at rollerblading camp. Probably the <laughs> softest thing I've ever heard you say in my life. Son, son, <laughs> Next to this guy him. getting whaled by I a 300 pounder. I saw him get whaled, but the guy just hugged him and he fucking fell <laughs> over. Ah, it was dude. a bear hug. He said, he got he a literally... shoulder right into his face nah, mask. Fam. And that face mask is hard and right here. He, is I didn't have a helmet on. Money spot right I now. didn't have all this padding. I didn't have anything like that. The ground weighs a lot more than some 300 pound lineman. Ground weighs millions of pounds. Well, they were, well, they were at they I'm were wrong. in uh, they were in New Orleans, yeah. which is astroturf, which is pretty hard. It's not grass. That is, but it's he not concrete. The ground. My man just hugged him. He kissed him. Man, I don't know, bro. It's not. It's I that look. miracle turf. It's not as hard as astroturf. But yeah. the man got rocked. Concussions are little. Like they're actually killing people. <laughs> and then they just threw this guy back out in the game. Fan. They're not just kill. They're like the cigarettes of sports injuries. Like they don't just kill you. They kill the motherfuckers around you. <laughs> it's crazy. This concussion shit is crazy. Yo, you can die from second hand. Second hand. Man, wives be yeah. dying from that shit. Yo, wow. It's it's and then they just keep sending these guys back in. Julian Edelman uh, won the Super Bowl MVP against Seattle with a concussion. Quiet is kept. He that's had all I'm saying. You're good. Yeah, you are right for the day, but I it's, mean, it's a, are, that's what I'm I saying. Got like, concussions, yeah, bro. you could get out back out there and play. I don't think the issue is like could he have got back out there and played because clearly he did, and they fell a little short. But like he was still doing his thing. But if the NFL is going so hard about player safety and trying to protect people from concussions, and like we're really making this a big deal, and we're going to take yeah. care of this type of shit, you cannot. Look like that yeah. <laughs> after a hit and be like, nah, he's good. Send him back out there. What makes it tough is I ran into a pole once. <laughs> <laughs> stop trying to equate. I'm just saying, I your... ran into a fucking hard stop, ass pole. Stop trying to this equate your Colombian your... <laughs> bitch was chasing me out, outside my high school when I was 15 years old. And. I, I was running away from her ass, <laughs> and I and I was, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think a lot of this goes you know to I mean? you just being white and uncoordinated. So, <laughs> first of all, maybe <laughs> I think that's what, you know it what I mean. All this boils down. Swift ass <laughs> Colombian playing soccer footwork was mad good. I couldn't shake her. <laughs> <laughs> right, I look back to see if I got some distance away from the Colombian, and then I, the next thing I turn, next thing I knew, I was on the ground. And I was hearing mad ringing in my ear. Another oh, concussion. Jesus. Took me to the hospital. Back home that night. Getting busy with the homework. But you didn't have to go out there and lead <laughs> a football team. Mad homework. Down. I entertain this. Like, mad homework. Bit. People <laughs> taking Andrew seriously when he does this bothers me more than Andrew does. Nah, I got mad homework <laughs> that said, night. My man said getting busy with the homework. <laughs> Ooh, what? What? Quadraticals? What? <laughs> what? Did I hit? The, I didn't hit the quadraticals. What? Protractors and Mad shit. Mad protractor. What? Hey, what is that shit? <laughs> Something square plus two x plus the Pythagorean what? theorem. All that. A all that Greek B shit. B all that pussy C ass Greek <laughs> shit. <laughs> Fuck Greece. If you listen in from there, we got no respect for you. <sighs> Shout out to gyros, man. Shout out to gyros. <laughs> Anyway, that's all I'm saying is you could you could really we're acting like a concussion means you can't do shit. But here's the thing, man. Yeah. You know, I feel like 
Well, they've probably already had multiple of these already with like Junior Seau and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like I always link back to you don't want your your Chris Benoit to happen. When your Chris Benoit happens, that's when it's like, oh, okay. Explain Chris Benoit for people who don't know. All right, wrestling. so people who know Chris Benoit, Chris Benoit was this really popular wrestler about uh, ten years ago. His finishing move was a diving headbutt, right? Like he would literally jump off the top rope and headbutt you while you're laying on the ground, right? Mind you, you wrestle about like four times a week, everywhere in the country, whatever. You're probably doing this move a hundred thousand. You've done this thing times thousands of the time, right? Right. He went nuts, killed his family, killed his wife, killed his son, killed himself, yeah. right? They finally look at his brain, yeah. like, when he passed away or whatever. He had, like, the brain of, like, a 93-year-old with dementia because he's taken so much, like, trauma to the head. And this isn't, this isn't just with his diving head, but, like, this is before, like, wrestling really cleaned itself up because before they used to just, like, hit you clean yeah. over the head with a steel chair. And, like, that was a thing for no them. No sport like, gave now, a fuck less than wrestling none, about the health of their... None, dog. Their like, they, they'd make themselves bleed. Like, they'd yeah. take steel chairs to the head. They'd dive off the head to make it look as real as possible. And he was one of the he was one of the best. He was one of the best pro wrestlers I had ever seen. And, like, I was sad for, like, three hours when he died. And I found out he killed his wife and child. I was like, oh, okay. It's... That's, that's Javon weird. Belcher, <laughs> same thing. Kansas City yeah. Chiefs killed his girlfriend. I maybe his girlfriend's child that they had together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and himself. Yeah, this is thing. This is this. It's the fucking cigarette smoke. Uh, yeah, sports injuries. It yeah. kills people around you. Look, I'm not saying everybody's gonna be as strong as me when it comes to concussions. <laughs> you know what? I and I meant to, I, I didn't want to interrupt your story, but I saw it. the look <laughs> in his face, and I know you that where he was I going. The same look, and the look is I, I know he's presenting listen, valid listen. points, but I can't give him that. <laughs> I have to not give a fuck about the emotionality of what he's saying yeah. and find the thing to. Say you stop analyzing everything. fun for a second. <laughs> God damn, <laughs> motherfucking computer. Look at me. That's me getting busy. That's me right after my concussion. Right? Getting busy. If y'all don't know what we're looking at right now, Alex, my Alex guy. Alex it today, man. <laughs> my guy just put a picture up of me on roller skates on the Pacific Ocean getting busy fresh off a concussion. Oh, Jesus Christmas. All I'm saying, not everybody going to be as strong as me when it comes to concussion. Now, well, something crazy happens to me later in my life is possible. That's only possible. It's possible. It's, possible. it's possible. But those are the risks you take when you want to live this life right. Alex, we got to get this image down because it says February 9th, not February 7th. <laughs> it's all good. Who? Who? Nah, we said seven on the text. Son, I've had three concussions. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck do you want from me, Alex? How am I supposed to have three concussions and get all the dates right? <laughs> Yo, sometimes I do think my concussion be fucking me up. Because- <laughs> I think I corrected February 7th. Real though. talk, my trainer, yeah. my trainer when we work out, counts down with the reps. Mm. Yeah. I count up. Yeah. And today, I was trying to count down with that motherfucker. That shit is weird. And he forgot. Man, I was skipping numbers like crazy, bro. I'd be like <laughs> 14, eight, 12. Four. I'd be like, no, 11. <laughs> like, like I get, I, the odd numbers, I don't even know how to count them going down. All I'm saying is watch out for concussions, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Them shits are real out shits here, bro. Is real. But for real, though, no, can we put February seventh for everybody's watching? Because we, it's all we good. Have- but we will tell everybody oh, okay. February seventh, February seventh, February seventh. Yeah, February come to 7th. Highline Ballroom. You know, what I mean, it's gonna be crazy. I, I, I got a lot of really good guests coming by, man. I won't tell you who, but you'll be fun and surprised and. It'll be a good, good night. So you get your money's worth, and it'll be a good old time. Y'all don't know Cass. Cass putting in work, man. Yeah, man. Putting in work. I'm trying, dog. I'm trying, bro. (sighs) All right. Let's talk about it, man. So um, your boy, uh, Rick Carlisle. Yeah. Yeah. Being a killjoy. Coming at ESPN's neck. Here's the thing. that I Okay, so just to set it up. He said, he's like, why do you guys keep um, interviewing LeVar Ball? Why do you keep posting, uh, you know, putting out stories about LeVar Ball? You're the problem here. You're the reason everything is For the same on. reason why he's answering a question at a press conference about LeVar Ball. So, exactly. But my issue is this. is like, first of all, sports are meaningless. <laughs> it is entertainment. That's uh, it. Uh, Nobody lives or dies. It's This is not like... The well, you could probably die if you get a lot of concussions. Concussion. <laughs> well, I'm saying like, like it's True. not it's not like, you know, all these news cor- corporations posting stories about Trump and then talking about Trump constantly and then he wins an election, right? Mm. Because there's shit on the line with that. Sports are entertainment. You know who's entertaining? LeVar goddamn LeVar ball. fucking ball. Yes. And as long as he's entertaining, we will talk about this motherfucker. 
Stop acting like sports mean something more than they else. A ball goes into a hole. <laughs> that is that is basically what sports are. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. it is fun. And if this dude is fun and we like it, then that's what the fuck it's going to be. Don't be a killjoy. No, like, you can say all the shit you want about, like, why do we cover LeVar Ball? Why do we do this? Like, bruh, he does numbers. He does numbers. What, what is the worst do- thing can happen if we cover LeVar Ball? What's the worst thing can happen? I mean, I yeah, he can, he can take down his team. Like, his Luke Walton's team. feelings are yeah. hurt. I don't know. <laughs> I thought Luke doubled down so brilliantly that was, on that. It was the best. It was the best response said? to the thing. You saw what? it? I, no, I don't know. So, so LeVar says uh, that Luke Walton uh, has lost the locker room, that the players don't want to play okay, for him, right? That. The next day, uh, one of the reporters asked one of these questions. He's trying to get an answer. Like, yeah. And he goes, so we noticed you took uh, Lonzo out at the end of the second and the end of the fourth or something like that. You took him out early. Is there a reason why you did that? And he goes... Uh, Luke Walton goes, yeah, because his dad was talking shit. <laughs> so I took him out. So I took his ass out. <laughs> and then he goes, nah, I'm just kidding. But it was like he doubled down. He's like, yes, yeah. I'm aware of what's happening in the zeitgeist. I know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to acknowledge it. And by acknowledging it, you say, listen, this doesn't affect me. Not for nothing. He might have galvanized his team with that. Facts. Like, absolutely. Because they won yesterday. And they won, like, they beat the break. I forgot who they played. But they beat the breaks off of some team yesterday. Mm-hmm. And Look, then, uh, I don't. I don't think Lavar. I actually like Lavar criticizing uh, Luke. Yeah, because Lavar knows that Luke is not the right coach for Lonzo. Mm. Lonzo needs the ball in his hands, mm-hmm. and Luke is a Golden State Warriors, uh, uh, Spurs, Rockets. Rockets spread offense. Yeah. Where he, the Rockets even a little bit less, but like literally, Golden State is just ball movement, go go go, no dribbling. Lonzo needs the ball. He would work perfectly in pick and roll, something that like Dallas used to run, mm-hmm. you know, with Nash and that kind of stuff like that. And he knows Luke is never going to run that. And in Luke's system, Lonzo sits in the corner, yeah. and waits to brick a three. This is true. This is true. So if I'm to if his I'm, credit, Lonzo's been playing a lot better lately much better but Mm -hmm. he would he would play at his peak if you want to get the most out of him Mm -hmm. you got to put him in pick and roll offense Mm -hmm. you got to have the ball in his hand to let the guy i mean that's the utah jazz offense they've been running the same fucking offense since i was like five years old and look at donovan mitchell he looks like a goddamn star like he looks like he looks like he should be an all-star this year bro he's been playing that good it's yeah Yeah. anyway so if i'm if i'm lavar and i want to influence a team to help my son Mm -hmm. play better which is what every dad should want to do for Mm -hmm. their kid I, that's what I would do. I'd criticize the coach and hopefully get the coach out of there and get a coach in that you know knows how to. Play so I'm son. so I'm not as like privy to like what the what the Better Business Bureau does or whatever. Mm-hmm. But apparently they gave Big Baller Brand an F grade Ooh. for <laughs> their their products or something like that. Is that like is this a big deal or not? Nah? I don't know. It's so not I don't a big go deal. off Better Business Bureau. Yeah, it's, it's, because better, people who are buying Big Brawler brand don't give a fuck about the exactly. Better Business Bureau. It's yeah. like Supreme could get F from, from the fucking... Uh, yeah, are people going to stop buying Supreme? No, they'll, they'll put it on a t-shirt, and then they'll buy that exact yeah. t-shirt. It's, it's fine. The, Lamar, we just brand. gave you a free idea, Fam, dog. Lamar, if you don't print the exact notification <laughs> from the Better Business Bureau... Better Business Bureau, Big, Big Baller, Baller Brand. brand. Yeah. You got triple Bs. Yeah. Right. Make I mean, this shit said, happen. He said he had the perfect response for it, though. What did he say? He said... That we don't pay attention to those triple Bs no more. I didn't even think you guys still existed. Everybody's talking about Big Baller Brand now. We're and I'm like, Big Baller Brand. And like, and that's why we give Lavar so much attention because us as like the media or as like journalists, we say we want honesty from the subjects. We say we want people to answer questions directly. And when they do, we're like, oh no, not like that. No, like this. Yada yada yada. Yeah. And it's like, all right, great. If Archie Manning goes and says. Uh, John Mayer doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. That's I, news. I wouldn't like it still. You I wouldn't like it, but it's news? If you're a parent, and Archie played, so it's a little different, I guess, but if you're a parent, I still think, just fall back. I shut up. That's need, what you think? Not shut up, but just, we don't need that much of it. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't doubt that it's not comfortable, not wrong, and it's not, it's putting Lonzo in an awkward situation where he has to be like, oh, who do you back? Your dad or your coach? Whatever. I'm not saying that. But to Carlisle's point, I'm like, that's why it's news. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't pick and choose what, you know, people are allowed to pay attention to. Who yeah. moves the needle? Like, this guy moves the fucking needle, Carlisle dog. also, and this is shitty, he always is horrible with the media, hates the media, mm. argumentative with the media, short with the media, and then as soon as he got fired from the Pacers before he went to the Mavs, what he did was go to ESPN and get a job with the media. Facts. Facts. Carl is also like a weirdo. Like he believes in energy bracelets and like oh, he's, he's very superstitious. He, he loves basketball and he don't give a fuck about anything else. So I can see why he's 
Yeah. He doesn't want anything to do with autistic. LeBar. A little autism going on. Have you ever seen Rick Carlisle? Maybe. Yeah. Have you ever seen Rick Carlisle and Jim Carrey in the same place at the same um, time? No, they, and they look shockingly <laughs> similar. <laughs> it's, it's scary. They are the same fucking person. Um, same fucking okay, person. so what did Garoppolo do to Giselle? <laughs> Should we talk about that? Listen, she might have just thought he was hot. And that's, that's a handsome enough. boy. He's oh, a yeah. handsome oh, dude, dude though. Like, go dude. send him to the gays. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna hit on my wife, bro? Yeah, if I'm going to San Francisco with ugly chicks and gay dudes. If I'm a GM, yeah. If I'm if I'm Jimmy Garoppolo's agent, yeah. Who's also that, Tom Brady's agent? Who, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, oh same God. Oh, that's a ESPN that's a wrinkle, right? I just want to make sure I'm not questioning y'all. No, I've, I've, I've I didn't read the whole no, thing. No, it's but one thing know. in there, but it's easy if you missed it. Go. But if you've read the ESPN article, it's fucking fascinating. Go, go, uh, go. The go, whole go, article, go, go. it just and I'm not going to detail it well, but it just details the power struggle between uh, Kraft and Belichick. And Brady, okay, and apparently Brady's trainer, something Guerrero, yeah, yeah like the the hot, he's the, kind of the, the source of, of the problem where he kind of made his way into the Patriots facility, and Belichick was cool with it at first, and then he started overstepping his bounds, and people started to feel like you can't be cool with Brady if you're not doing his TB12 method or whatever, and that guy's influence on Brady seemed to grow, and that seemed to cause a lot of tension mm. between Belichick and Brady. Apparently, the trainers are phony. Yeah, I heard. I heard like he's like a hack or whatever. And yeah, it's like... it's, there's no like truth to his methods. This that the other besides the fact that he's got this 40 year old quarterback playing like he's 27 years that's old. That's that's the only thing he needs. Okay, so then what else does the article say? So basically, that was the cause of the tension. Yeah, and uh, that strained the relationship to the point that Brady kind of started to he his relationship with Belichick frayed. Belichick had this replacement ready. Brady wasn't cool with that. He started getting a little bit like insecure, uncomfortable. Maybe he was kind of feeling the signs of his own age. Mm. And he's just like, I don't like this motherfucker here breathing down my neck. Uh-huh. To Robert Kraft, he needs to go. Robert Kraft forced Belichick to trade him. Like, you don't have and a Belichick choice. Belichick did not want to do it. Belichick did not want to do it. Because why would you? Why would you? And Look I could be him. honest, he Look might have done it just as a fuck you to Brady sent him to his hometown. Wow. Sent who? Garoppolo was playing in San Francisco. Where did Tom Brady grow up? Yeah. Who was Tom Brady's fucking hero for his entire life yeah. is Joe Montana. Wow. Wait a minute. Tom Brady's from San Francisco? Yeah. There's so many. That's wrinkles. why my man modeling Uggs, fam. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense. There is so many. And, and the fact that I didn't, I didn't know they had the same agent. Like the same wrinkles agent. there. There's so many Dude, wrinkles there because it's like, bro. handsome motherfucker growing up in San Francisco, God bless him for getting out of there. He would have got raped. Oh, my. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that butt chin in San Francisco, bro? He had to get to Boston. He had to go yeah. to the most homophobic city in all of the world. It's like, anything to keep my butthole safe. Please, Boston? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? I, I, I'm going to put on my, my conspiracy hat. I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat real quick. Okay. I think this is the agent's doing. I think this is his agent's doing. I think if I'm Jimmy Garoppolo's agent, yeah. right after those games that he played in San Francisco, where he balled out, and he balled out, and this is before, and apparently, if all this happened before he went to San Francisco, all I got to do to talk to any team to get as much money as possible is be like, "Yo, he was breathing down Tom Brady's neck." This motherfucker was like, "He had Tom Brady shook like he's about to take my spot." The most untouchable fucking quarterback in the history of untouchable quarterbacks, dog. I think the agent set it up. I think he set it up to get Brady paid and get his new his new Brady paid. He gets Brady paid. He gets new Brady paid. And he gets the Patriots something in return. Mm. Well, a second round pick is... Uh, there were rumors, and at the time, I thought that's crazy on Cleveland's part, but there were rumors Cleveland was going to give... Was offering... Both their first round picks last year for Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah. yeah. which was number one and number twelve, I think. Yeah, you talk to any like football guy, like anybody, anybody who's like really like a film yeah. nerd and stuff like that. All they kept going on about was like, "Yo, this, this is before he even he even got traded. This is just in the games where he was like in yeah. fucking you know in cleanup or like filling yeah. in for Brady while he's injured." He, he was like, "Dog, go look at them Garoppolo tapes, dude. He's the next one." Like and and like, Belichick was apparently like pissed off and heartbroken that well, he had to trade. Yeah. He was gonna have to pay him, right? Yeah. But they were offering. I I think I also remember reading they were offering between fifteen and seventeen million a year. So what I need nothing. To, what I need to know is why Brady wanted him gone. This screams... Brady is really that insecure. You think Brady's worried about? Apparently, okay, also dog. internally, One they're thing. noticing some signs of slippage from Brady. So here's the thing: has a 
it, Brady's probably gonna win MVP this year, right? Either him or Gurley. Uh, Gurley, maybe. Yeah, I think it's gonna be Brady. Though. It should be Brady, but there's that Brady fatigue. Mm-hmm. The same thing we we're talking about the Jordan LeBron fatigue and, and LeBron Jordan, fatigue, yeah, etc. Yeah. It should be Brady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So has a as a has a current MVP ever been this disrespected during the regular season? Dog, I'm gonna tell you this. That's insane. No, it's happened before, dog. Who? This screams of Favre Rogers to me, man. Who? This screams right. of Favre, Favre, Favre Rogers to oh. me, dog. Yeah, but Brett Favre said he was going to retire. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he retired. Pulled, he pulled the Jay Leno. Yeah. Yes, he let exactly. He yeah. pulled yeah, the yeah, Jay Leno. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But the Packers are like, nah, fuck that, dude. You're Rogers retired. Rogers is ready. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Rogers yeah. is ready. We're good. And the Patriots buckled. They're like, ah, okay, we'll do what you want, Tom. Like, that's. Brett so, so, so Belichick made a decision. That he was ready to let Garoppolo take the reins. How sociopathic is Belichick that he was? I don't sit think. Well, Brady? I think he was just mm-hmm. saying we want to sign. We want to have both of them signed. It's going to eat up a lot of cap, but we're going to have both of them signed. Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on Brady. If he's still Brady, we're good. But Belichick don't give a fuck. That's if, what if I'm Brady saying. Slips, we got Garoppolo, fifteen, seventeen million a year. You're there, That's and if what... not, you get paid fifteen, seventeen million a year. Sit on the bench. We'll figure. You know it out. what? I think Brady. I think Brady is going to regret this, and I'll tell you I why. I think so, too. I think Brady plays better when he's got a fire underneath his ass. Mm-hmm. He's always played with a chip on his shoulder. He's always thought he wasn't good enough, and he's going to keep pushing. And what keeps a 40-year-old man healthy? A 25-year-old who's probably just as good That's at him breathing down his neck. Now who's breathing down his neck? Nobody. Nobody. Well, I think yeah. now I... who who's could possibly take his job? Nobody. Now you're not going to put in that same work. So the article starts – Talking about, you remember the sideline blow up where Brady screamed at Josh McDaniels? Yes. And a lot of people, myself included, were like, "This is Brady being fiery competitor, or whatever." No, Josh McDaniels. Apparently, like, Garoppolo would have made that. Exactly. <laughs> Basically, it was a buildup of tension from like Jimmy months. Jimmy ate those in practice, yeah, though. Yeah. Oh, oh. I saw was, Jimmy make that exact pass. Yeah. And Brady Bro, went, ah! he, he went yeah, to yeah. San Francisco and won five games with them, and those guys Sam. were fucking. Terrible. I don't. I think they had won one game before that, and then went undefeated when he got there. Yeah. Undefeated when he got there, and the, he came in relief. He came in the relief. The defense game and he started played. playing well. Ugh. Like they looked at the. Not only does he start to produce offense, all of a sudden the D made a miraculous turnaround. Confidence now, is the biggest thing in the world. One and, confidence, yeah. and also two, when you're not playing D the whole game because yeah, your offense true. sucks. Oh, great you're point. Be able yeah, to great play point. Better. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I kind of feel like that. I absolutely feel like. And just, this might be. Wait, just finish because, the McDaniel. But to oh, your point, to your point. Then Jimmy, I believe Jimmy G's trade was after that, and they said Brady felt liberated and like a huge relief down his neck. And then the new quarter, the backup, I forget who it is, but he's like an ally of Brady. He's a friend. He's not a threat at yeah. all. Mm. And Cucky Brady McCuckerson. much prefers this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bobby Ho- Brian Hoyer or something like that. It's Ho- oh, it Hoyer, is Hoyer. Hoyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ultimate yeah. Who's like a good friend yeah. is, and just like he's the backup. He's he, he no backed him up good. before. Like, but apparently it was like it was not Brady was not handling it well because they he really felt like Belichick was starting to hand the keys over. I don't know. It just God, made him Belichick insecure. Is a fucking savage. Dog, I respect and here's it, though. what scares me. I respect a, it though. That's how you keep a like franchise. dog, I like am. zero connection to the players. Here's what scares me as a fan of the Cowboys. The, he loves the Giants still. He fucking hates the Jets. He loves New York. Loves the Giants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Giants need a new coach. Bro, if this article is as as crazy as everybody says, and he might leave. He, the Giants are right there. Yeah, and Belichick on the Giants is the scariest right. fucking yeah. thing. <laughs> in the Absolutely world. frightening. Yeah, but give Belichick. Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, and get out of my fucking... And, and like Eli. Sam you know what he would do with Odell? He would or like oh, some... Who, what's the dude Eli from USC and let, or whatever? And let Dar- uh, Darnold or... Um, Whoever they draft. Uh, you know what Belichick uh, would do? What's the other guy? Uh, Saquon Barkley? Rosen. Rosen, Josh Rosen. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, you yeah, let yeah. Rosen from UCLA. Either one of those guys, you let them groom them for a couple of years under Eli while Eli goes into and his twilight. All Eli wants is two more years. Mm-hmm. Here's what Belichick would do. He would trade out of the number two pick get two or three first rounders. He would trade Odell Beckham for two or three first rounders <laughs> and then he would just draft whoever the fuck he think, thinks fits his system and then they'd be amazing. Mm. That's how he operates. He don't give a fuck about he's Stars, always trading. Nothing. He yeah. doesn't give a it fuck was, about star players. You know what's weird is everybody said and I'm listen, I still think they are the favorites to win the Super Bowl, I guess, but I remember this offseason they traded a number 1 for who's the fucking Saints receiver that they traded for? I don't remember his Brooks. name. Uh um uh gosh. Brooks. Uh, Cook. Brandon Cooks. Brooks. Brandon, Brandon Cooks. Cooks. Yeah. Cooks. And everybody was like, oh, the Patriots are going to be unstoppable. But I was like, I don't, this just doesn't seem like a Patriots move uh, that they do when they're really good. They're not giving up draft picks for like home run hitters. They're just, they're usually trading back and just getting guys that fit the Belichick model and they're kicking ass and that's it. Mm. it this whole offseason, like big <coughs> signings, it, it, I don't know. I was in my mind, I was like, I don't know. I guess they're still the favorite, but I'm not positive this is going to work. 
If you're, if you're, a, a, you really think Belichick would leave the Patriots? I think he would, and then come to the team that I don't, beat him twice. I don't twice? think he would, but it terrifies me. I think he would. But you think he goes to the team that beat him twice? Think yes. about. I mean, you got to think about like because this, though, it would man. be a fuck you to who to the Patriots. So, so here's my thing. Belichick doesn't care, right? What his thing is, he has zero emotional connection to anything, and that's what allows him to be such an amazing coach and allows him to run yeah, a team he's amazingly. Yeah. He is sociopathic in that way. So why would somebody with zero emotional connection all of a sudden make such an emotional decision as to go to the Giants? Well, it's not like they're in bad shape. I don't shape. think it's that emotional, yeah. No, like no, like they... he's going strictly to say fuck you to the Patriots. Well, no, he... he doesn't say fuck you because he doesn't feel the well, anger I... behind a fuck no, you. What I, what I think he's getting at is I think – the reason why he's so mad that they forced him to trade Garoppolo is that he sees the end of the road for that team. You know what I mean? And I kind of feel like if I'm a Boston fan, like what if this is like the beginning of the end of that dynasty and like you had the perfect fucking, you know, uh, uh, what's what's the good word? The uh, the guy who comes up after you, like the perfect fucking successor. Success, successor, yeah, The yeah. perfect successor to the, the greatest quarterback. Thank you, Alex. The greatest quarterback you've ever had of all time, whatever. And he traded him away because of his ego. Like. That was the beginning of the end, to be honest. I don't trading Garoppolo. Yeah, Do like, you take it Brady be... or Belichick? Belichick? Take Belichick, dog. I hate to, and I love Brady. Take I think he's the world's foremost alpha, but I would take Belichick. That, he's the, if he's the world's foremost alpha, why would he trade Garoppolo? That is the most beta yeah. move ever. That's saying this to your girlfriend. Don't talk to him. <laughs> is it not? Yeah. That's it. Don't like talk block to him. him on Twitter. Or block right. him on Twitter. Oh, block yeah, him. Yeah, on, yeah, and like, no. Your girl's like, I would never talk to him. I respect you. I don't trust you because mm. I'm so Kraft that made him do it. He didn't. He wasn't going to do it. Kraft made him. Brady is the world's foremost alpha. Yeah. His action to not. To, oh, to yeah, ask yeah, the yeah. trade. Oh, 100%. I got you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Absolutely. It's like yeah. the insecure guy going, why yeah. Why you block his number? Tell him not to talk yeah. to you. Yeah, which is... Have confidence your girl not going to suck his dick. Which, to me, is like a sign that, okay, his he is... I don't know about five more great years from Brady. Maybe he feels vulnerable right now, and he feels insecure in a way that, like, he kind of feels a slipping away, maybe. So Brady feels his own physicality. Maybe. Maybe. There's something Yikes. that's not vintage Brady about that. Yeah, not at all. You think that he wants the challenge? Oh, he's yeah. fucking forty, dog. He's fucking forty. Yeah, Father Tom is undefeated. Yeah, it may not be. It may. It could be the next game. It could be next year. It could be in the off season. But like, there's gonna be a time where you don't got it no more, dude. Fuck, it's like so it's scary. gonna happen. And like, he's probably as much of a psychopath as Brady is. Yeah. Like he's probably doing everything in his power to prevent that. That's but the like, TV twelve method. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for real. That's what it is. He got Masochism. This fucking well, what snake oil salesman Guerrero is yeah. has got his all these techniques because he thinks it's going to extend his career. Look, I don't know. I, I think there is something. What we got to do is we got to, uh, you know, um, give our best wishes to Julius Irving. I don't know if you guys heard this, but uh, no, what happened to Julius Irving? He was at he was at a uh, Sixers game. And he fell ill. And he had to go to the hospital. Oh shit! We can't lose Dr. J. Yeah. All right. That sucks. And I think we all know where he went wrong. <laughs> yeah, damn it. <laughs> we all know where this is going. Which God is damn. going to a Sixers game <laughs> in Philadelphia. Okay. Now, if that Sixers game happened anywhere else in the world, do you think that that same situation would have happened? I don't think so, no. But, uh, damn. Akash, absolutely not. <laughs> I just you know want... why it did happen? is because he was in Philadelphia. When this becomes a mainstream thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want Andrew to get credit as a friend. Oh, I, I won't get credit. He you know, someone else credit. will get fucking credit for my shit. I want everybody to, everybody who listens to this or mm-hmm. Brilliant Idiots, yeah. when you start hearing about this in the mainstream media, because you will, <laughs> yeah. because it's really fucking good. <laughs> it's a curse. I'm jealous it's of a how curse. good this is. How do people believe in ghosts? They don't believe the Philly's curse. There's way more facts <laughs> to support the fact that Philly's curse. The guy was getting honored for his windmill dunk 35 years ago when they played the Lakers. He yeah. filmed a documentary like two years ago. He could still dunk. Yeah. He could still dunk. Yeah. Now he couldn't even stand up. <laughs> When he goes into the Philly arena. I don't know the name of the Philly arena. I don't even want to uh, say it because I feel like if Union I say Center it three times. It's the yeah. boogeyman. It's the, the boogeyman. <laughs> Literally, Candyman is going to come out if you say wherever the fuck in the Philly arena. What is the name of it? Does anybody I think know? First Union Center. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it's called. Or Wells Fargo Center or something. Wells like Fargo that. Center? I think. And I what happened recently with I Wells Fargo? I could be Fargo? super wrong. I don't know. What happened? Well, when you go, a little bank fraud happened recently with oh, Wells Fargo. True. <laughs> All I'm saying is, and they got outed for some bank fraud. All I'm saying is, you can trace oh, everything back to Philadelphia. Oh God! Everything damn it. back to Philly. Philly has a game coming up. Do you think that they're going to win this game? I don't know who they're playing. Yeah, they play um, that team. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, oh gosh, man. No, who do they play? I don't know. Fuck. It's a million games a year. I think Am I'm I the only <laughs> one who's disappointed that they're still like fighting for the eighth seed, basically? No, nah, man. I like, feel like they should no, be I'm better. About football. Oh, oh Eagles. football! Yeah. Eagles oh, the yeah. Eagles. Yeah. Falcons. Ah, Eagles. Falcons, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Falcons. I don't think the, I don't think the Eagles are gonna win. Of course, they're not gonna I don't win. Think they're gonna win. Do you know where they're playing it? In Philly. That's why they're not gonna win. <laughs> the worst thing that could have ever happened is home field advantage for the God, Philadelphia yeah. Eagles. And there's no Carson Wentz. And well, the we Falcons are looking. No calls Andrew Wentz. called it too. I unbelievable that Damn, I was. Dog. Uh, I mean, he said it with complete confidence. Carson Wentz is gonna get hurt. I, and I don't want it to happen. This you is just a, know. This is a God fearing man. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a God fearing. I hate the skills. Eagles, and he is, seems like such a good fucking guy. Oh, he doesn't man. deserve it. He's he doesn't a, he's a good Tebow. It. He's a he's a he's a good he's Tebow. A good he really Tebow. That's yeah. really, he's everything we wanted. Tebow Never to be. made a B in his life. <laughs> oh my God! You know he made a bad decision when he went to <laughs> play for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think should have went full Eli yeah, Manning. Like no, I'm not playing for them, bro. I'm good. No, no, no. Would you? Would you get drafted? You're the first pick of the draft. If I'm an NBA player, I would rather play for the Cleveland Browns than play for the Philadelphia yeah, the Eagles. Okay. I would change sports <laughs> before well, I play for the expectations are lower, too. Way lower. All you got to do is win one game in Cleveland. Fam, and you're a, you're the, a the game star. that they win in Cle- you know how many babies are going to be made that night <laughs> that will go fatherless the, game, the, day, the day that they actually win their first game? <laughs> oh, my gosh. God bless. God. Anyway, our hearts and prayers going out to Julia Serving. You know? I did read he, did, he was he was not at the hospital, so I guess he was right. at the hospital. He was yeah. dead ass, yeah. But he, he he was okay. He's recovered. He's That's made good. full recovery. And good. they sent him to a hospital in South Jersey. Um, <laughs> good move. Good move. <laughs> <laughs> they took him out of the city to go good to the move. hospital because they know the knowledge of the curse is saving people. You're saving lives, Schultz. You're saving lives. That's all I've ever wanted to do. You know, you're out here making the world a better place. That's, that's all. That's really all I've ever wanted to do. And I Save and I wish doctor. the best for uh, for for Philadelphia. I really, I really do. Hmm. Um, the uh, college football championship is tonight. Do we care? No. I'm going to watch it. I'm <laughs> yeah. going to watch yeah, it. You care about football. You're big into football. I mean, listen, I grew You're up Texas in Texas. Boy, yeah, yeah. That's, it's crazy. It's surprising how much you know about football. Yeah. And I think it's because you grew up in the culture you, of it. You, you, I went to massive. My school, they really cared about high school football, but I didn't really. Right. But then, like, after I graduated, my friend was from the country, and then he took me to a couple of, like, Country ass high school football games Sick. and these motherfuckers, they live for this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's kind of sad because mm. it's fucking 15 year olds that you're rooting for, like it matters. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's crazy. It's like screaming at kids with pimples. Yo, right? And <laughs> I judged it and I still kind of judge it because these are babies and like, yeah. you know, but they fucking live for football. Yeah. And in Dallas, you live for the Cowboys. I remember reading an article in 07 when they were really good on ESPN page two or whatever they used yeah. to have, yeah. and it was talking about how strippers. Make way more money when the Cowboys are good. Because people read are that celebrating the Cowboys are good. Let's go to the strip club. Yeah. Like the city lives for the Cowboys. I wonder how much uh, strippers care about making money. Because if they did care about making money, they would go out there and give some Oprah dick sucks <laughs> to the opposing teams that come into Dallas to get those boys tired before they play the Cowboys. Think That's about a, that. If I, you're listen, a stripper, I'm, some blood sport. Remember when Homer got his dick sucked before the fight? The Kumate? Yeah. He he had to he got his dick sucked before the Kumite and he had no energy to fight Listen, in the Kumite. I I agree. I think do whatever it takes to make the Cowboys good. Out of you. That you suck yeah. the testosterone out of them, dead yeah. ass. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's a great idea. Strippers <laughs> in Dallas, but I, step it up. Yeah, I grew up. You just love football. I NBA really takes a backseat for me until the Super Bowl, and then I'm like, oh, it's just yeah, it's cool to see. Thank God, because I don't know jack shit. Yeah, I mean, well, I know enough to talk. You about You guys the know culture. a shitload about basketball. It's Fair insane. Enough. Fair so enough. that's you know that's the balance. Okay, um, so football, we, you know, you mentioned that football ratings are down this year. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Yeah, tell They're me. They're down 9%, but all primetime viewership is also down 9%. That's the question I was going to ask. People are making a big deal about this football ratings being down. If football ratings are down the exact same percentage that all ratings are down, yes. mm-hmm. they're not really down. Yeah. People are watching less TV on their TVs. Maybe they're catching clips of the game. Maybe they're doing these other things. You got red football zone. Football is got completely your phone. You got fine. Yeah. Nothing is affected. As long as Game of Thrones is being watched 9% less than uh, Monday Night Football or whatever it is, then everything's okay. So we're making a big deal out of nothing. Uh, people... It's kind of sad to say, but people don't really care about the take a knee shit like they market it to because we people well, are acting. They care. Like, let's not. Fam, let's, we like, made it seem like, motherfuckers made it seem like we ain't watching, t- the 9% of people ain't watching football. But This like, is one thing, though. You understand the point I'm making. I understand exactly the point you're making, mm-hmm. but I will say this, too, like, I guess a counter to that point. Yeah. 
ratings in TV have been dropping for maybe a decade now. Live sports has always done well. Live events always rate well. People mm. still watch the Golden Globes last night. I didn't because I think that shit is gross as fuck. <laughs> but uh, people still watch the Golden Globes. People still watch the NBA All Star Game, the Super Bowl. Any anything that you can tweet about and talk to your friends about in the moment. Mm. That's a they like a watch societal it. thing. Jeez. Always does well. Advertisers still pay top dollar for that because nobody wants to TiVo that and then catch up to the rest of Twitter. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I can't watch a game after it happens. Yeah. So it is, even though it's in line with most primetime ratings, I still think it's a little disconcerting that it's down that much. But our thing is, I think what really makes people concerned about it is the concurrent growth of the NBA, though. And I also and think like how, like how much, I don't know if it's like, I haven't really checked the numbers, but I heard that the NBA, like, didn't beat the NFL, but came pretty damn close on Christmas. Oh, NBA you know taking I mean? over. Like, and it's like, yeah, and it's it's trending upwards. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, yeah, maybe those numbers in the NFL don't mean much, but it's not like it's not trending anywhere. Right. It's not, it's not going trending. In it's the not. Right it's not looking good. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's stable, I guess they'll survive. Right. But it's not like I'm looking at the NFL. I'm like, this is gonna be around for 20 more years. So, so this is this is a serious question, right? Mm-hmm. Who gives better head? No, I'm <laughs> no, no. This is this is a serious question. You think about buying a franchise, right? Right. It's a no brainer. If you have the money to buy it, you just buy it because you can't lose money on a franchise. Yeah. The the, the Carolina Panthers are up for sale. Are going to be up for sale, right? If we think football might not be the same sport that it is now in thirty years, do you spend two billion? On a franchise. I still think people will. I don't know for how much longer, but right now the Panthers are going to sell for a shitload of money. They'll, they will because, sell, but but we have to consider the money? option yeah. that it could continue. Yes. to, And that's scary as an investment. I would buy any NBA team. Anyone. If I had the money, anyone. Because I yeah. know where the league is safe. It's a great investment. The cable deals. Like that's the CVs, it. Done. Everything like, dog, they they're great. And we they're trending upwards. We might see the end of football. And do I want to put two billion? It's like buying a medallion for a taxi. Mm. And then Uber you know, comes back out. in the yeah. day, Uber. NBA Uber, NBA Uber. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, shit, soccer is via. I yeah, I took this. <laughs> I found this quote months ago. Yeah, because I remember saying Mark Cuban predicted that football would fall. Mm-hmm. Oh and yeah, it's yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. incredible they how bit too many days off. Or profit, shit, how prophetic this has seemed. He said this. This is the quote. I took it down. Just watch. Pigs get fat. Hogs get slaughtered. When you try to take it too far, people turn the other way. I'm just telling you, when you got a good thing and you get greedy, it always, 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 always turns on you. That's rule number one of business. He's saying that about the NFL putting games on Thursday and Saturday and Friday, Monday yeah, and yeah. Sunday. Yeah. And he's just said it. These guys are getting too greedy. Mm. This is years ago he had this quote. I wish I wrote down what year. Like three years ago mm. when football was king. Mm-hmm. Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. That's yes. a hell of a quote. That's a bar. Man, see Mark Cuban. I'd love to say that to a thick girl before I hit. Pigs get slaughtered, baby. Hey, girl, what's up? Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. What? End over. <laughs> really brings it out of him, I guess. <laughs> she bends over, just falls. You know what's hilarious? Is we started this podcast with a phone call from Andrew to both our moms. Yeah. And then after that, he talked about Oprah getting given head for yeah. 20 straight minutes. And then just talked about I mean, fucking a fat bitch things. and calling her a hog. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If she was cool with it, yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. You know what I mean, I just get fat hogs get slaughtered. <laughs> That'd be dope if a girl said that to you if you were fat. Like for some reason, like that right? sounds like that sounds like that's that just sounds fire coming from anybody. So like if a chef comes up to you and is like, "Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered," I'm like, "This meal's about to be table. awesome." <laughs> dog. No, what if, like, we all we at, we assume everything's so fucking sexist? What if a girl before she sucks your dick, she pulls your dick out and she goes, "Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered." <laughs> and then she starts sucking your dick. You'd be like, "Yo, I'm like, this I don't know what that means, but yeah, hogs get slaughtered." <laughs> but if you say something towards a girl, all like, "Oh, this must have a sexist undertone. These guys are such misogynists." <laughs> no, not at all. It's just a dope bar to say, and it's even more dope if a girl is more. Pig shaped. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, Jesus God. Christ. What oh, kind of world do we live in? <laughs> oh, fucking nuts. Yo, is Kawhi boy. Leonard not built for it anymore? Oh, damn. We gotta start asking ourselves this, it's man. Scary. It's a scary I'm a thing. Big to fan act. Of Kawhi Leonard. Fa- the I don't know, man. I just, just so saw for everybody Kawhi who doesn't know, Kawhi uh, Pop just said that Kawhi has a small tear in his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Right? Bathroom, Marcos? Mm-hmm. So a small tear in his shoulder. Mm-hmm. 
just coming off this quad injury that wasn't like a regular quad injury. It was like some like the motherfucker could not walk at the beginning of the season. Yeah, his like, thigh muscle, right? Yeah. Like a bad thing. It was really bad. Yeah. So now he has his torn shoulder. And he and, was already on a minutes restriction. Like, he wasn't even off that shit yet. And obviously the ankle injury, which was random. Yeah. That was more random. But are we starting to – is this bad luck and coincidence? Or are we starting to see an elite player's body not hold up to the task of playing basketball? I don't know. I mean, I think this is just classic pop. I think this is classic Ooh, pop. Like, you, you know conspiratorial what? today, bro. bro. Like, I'm, I'm coming I'm, through hot. The brain has been thinking a lot lately. Let's go. Talk <laughs> to me. Talk to <laughs> me. No, nah, I just think this is classic pop, man. Like, the, the Spurs are just fine. I think they're third in the league right now. I think they're like 28 and like 12 or so. Right. Something ridic- the same Spurs shit they do every year when nobody's talking about them. You look exactly. up, they're like the second best record in the league and yeah. they're not even fucking, you know, it's like they don't need Kawhi now. You know what I mean? It's January. The eye on the prize is taking down those motherfuckers in Oakland. That's we it. don't need him now. Yeah. You get yourself right. If you you ask a lot of people, they said if Kawhi was healthy last year, maybe Golden State they give Golden State a fight. You know what I'm saying? Like Fam. that first game, that first game, they Fam. were beating the brakes off the Warriors. A freak Bullying injury. Them. Bullying them. And then the rest is history. Yeah. So it's like, we don't need Kawhi to win MVP. We don't need him to win another defensive player of the year. We need Kawhi in May and June. Yeah. And I think Pop sees that. The first sign that he saw, that he saw him being a little dinged up or nothing, he's like, no. Nope. Bye. On the bench. Relax, fam. We need Let you. Rudy Gay handle this. You know what I mean? Like, they got, they got a squad. Like, they got that Spurs. They're, they're very Patriot-like. I was about like, to say you know, that. They are built like the Patriots. They got the system, and they got people to fill it, even yeah. if injuries happen. Yeah. No, yeah. I just think this is classic Pop doing what he does, man. Like, he's putting his best prize possession on ice for any little thing, because the last thing he wants is to go and win 69 games like they did yeah. last year, yeah. and have fucking Zaza Pachulia fall on you again, Shaq. and then you're out for the final. You know what and I noticed a, a about, about um Kawhi? And this is interesting. Is it... um. I mean, I love Kawhi. I'm a huge fan. Huge fan of Kawhi. Me too. No ISO moves. No. Nah. It is interesting. Like, off the dribble, I should say. He can he can back you up. He can do a little, uh, mm. you know, fade away or something like that. But he has no, like, in and out cross. I've never seen him cross someone nah. over. Never seen him spin move on someone. He either bullies you, elevates over you, and hits. Maybe hits you with, like, a little hezzy and pull yeah. up. But he doesn't have that, I'm going to break you down like a Steph, like a Kyrie, like an Iverson, like a Kobe. I, like no, even actually, Braun. honestly... I think his offensive game is very Kobe like. Kobe, I think it's Kobe like. Kobe could get. He could cross you. He He not cross you. I personally, again, I personally, I think he's blessed with less offensive skill than any other superstar. But not here's the thing. Like he's not. He doesn't have a lot of God given offensive skill. I don't think. I think he worked for every ounce of offensive skill that he has. Whereas Kobe uh, is one of the most blessed offensive players. They sent him to English. I think the name is somebody English. He's a the shooting coach. He's the guy who's like who fixes. I think he was supposed to be, and I think Jimmy Butler. My for his first couple years, I thought he was going to be like this shut down defensive, maybe three and D guys is ceiling, and then both of them ended up elevating their offensive game. I just want to get right back to this in a second, but just about Jimmy. Jimmy is a full man. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> yeah. the dude came into Minnesota, and he was averaging, like, 10, 12 points for your first few games. Mm-hmm. And he let everybody get their buckets, and he was just so goddamn fucking alpha. <laughs> he just waited it out, and now he's dropping 20, 24, 25. Yes. And he increased. But it's like, to have that confidence of... Oh, I'm gonna get my buckets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When mm-hmm. it comes to the end of the game, you know who we're going to. Yeah. You know, yeah. to the point where Cat was upset that he wasn't getting enough, that he wasn't getting enough touches. Cat's really? gotta bow down, though. Not for nothing. Like he's still a young pup. J- he's still a young. He's the Jimmy, young pup. A you full gotta take. Man, you gotta son. take advantage of Jimmy Butler's prime Oof. right now. Like Oof. as good as Cat is, I still don't think we've seen his ceiling yet. And it's like, bro, you gotta ro- you gotta ride with the dog that's in his prime right now. And that's Jimmy Butler. Hey, but right. my point but to, back to Kawhi. My yeah. Point to Kawhi. I think his skill isn't like crossing people over. He has amazing footwork. Incredible. Kobe has footwork. footwork. That's what I that's what I'm getting. He just doesn't to. have the yeah, yeah. I'm gonna shift you away with my dribble mm. thing that Kobe Kobe could cross the shit out of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never seen him cross anybody up. No. Nah. But he'll get in positions to score. He gains amazing separation. He never looks like he's out of control. Or off balance. Yeah. 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 Like he has such fucking freakishly long hands that look like you can't rip him. No. Nah, so it. it's like he's it's like he's fucking dribbling an orange. Yeah. Like an actual orange yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's like he just has such control. Like he plays with such control. Yeah. Yep. Like control. Like dog. Like that is a guy that you want 
He, I, I don't know his plus minus off the top of my head, but like, I can't imagine him ever being like in the negatives, like ever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he's gonna go- lock down your best player. Yeah, he's gonna score on your best defender. And like, what else can you? What else do? You, what else do you want from your from your top dude? I don't Across think it would have been sustainable. Game one against Golden State before he got injured was a clinic. Yeah, yeah, he was destroying them. Destroying, destroying them. them. KD wasn't really getting off. Well, that's the thing. Now you got somebody who can hold down. So here's the thing. Danny Green can chase around um can chase around uh, uh Clay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're built pretty well. Danny Green can chase around Clay. Who's Steph? Steph does what he does. Yeah. It's almost not even worth it, there's nobody that's going to be able to limit him at all besides Della Dova. So yeah. so you you might as well just let him get his his buckets. <laughs> Obviously not Della Dova. <laughs> but joking. But um but but Danny Green can at least chase around Clay. So you yeah. have somebody that has similar length and size, and he'll just be there. But nobody in the league besides maybe two or three people can affect KD. Mm. And Kawhi is one of He's them. He's one of them, yeah. So you let Steph go off. You hope to contain Steph. Mm. But you shut down these other guys. And and look, say what you want about KD. I mean, he's an amazing offensive player. He's he's unbelievable. But I think he is stoppable with, with a guy like Kawhi. I yeah. don't I, think I, Steph I, is. I don't want to say stoppable. I could. I think you can offset what KD does. Fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you can't game plan for Steph. Yeah. You can't game plan for your for point guard bringing up the ball shots. and pulling up from 40, and that's yeah. a good shot for him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't game plan for him running a million screens off you and Draymond Green with his great basketball mind getting him, getting everybody in great positions to score. Like, you can't game plan for that. You can game plan for a lot of what KD does because as good as amazing as he is, you know what I'm saying? Like you can offset it. You can at least score as much as he can or at least slow him down a little bit. And that's what Kawhi does. That's what LeBron used to do. I think I don't think he could really guard KD like he used to anymore. Mm-hmm. That's what um I would I would probably throw Giannis in there. Like Giannis could probably go with KD, but he just doesn't the Bucks don't just have they don't have the firepower to match up with the Warriors, and nobody really thinks about that. Yeah, but right. just like guy for guy, you know, I think he could he could, you know, yeah. go one on one with KD. Yeah. But Kawhi has the firepower. The Spurs have the firepower. They have yeah. the coach. Like they have they're the they're the one team that have certain clear advantages over the Warriors. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like there's other teams where it's like the Rockets are good, but like are you really picking them over the Warriors in a seven no. game series? No. No, not really. I just don't like, think they're capable of defending well enough to No. no. You, you're not gonna like, stop the Warriors, but you gotta do you gotta limit something. Yeah. And the Rockets approach is we're not we're just gonna outscore. We're them. just gonna outscore and you. And you're not gonna I mean, outscore them. I'm sorry. You could get I mean you could get a puncher you're a boxing guy. You could give somebody a puncher's chance. If you throw a, b- a bunch of punches and maybe one of them hits They'll win a game. I don't you think they have a punch. I think the teams that have a puncher's chance are the Spurs and weirdly the Thunder. Yeah. yeah I still I, think the Thunder have a puncher's chance. Well the Thunder The Thunder play, play D. defense. Yeah. The Thunder they lock play up. D. They kinda match up weirdly well. Russ and Steph um, you know, nothing in the realm offensively, but Roberson can kind of check. Oh, play but they a got bit. they got homeboy now. The the and rookie Paul is gonna chase KD, and Paul George is gonna chase Paul KD. George Who's the rookie? Oh uh, God, was it Ferguson? The kid that was like dunking all over the Lakers a couple nights ago. Kid Ferguson. Oh, yeah, 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 I don't know yeah, if he's a rookie yeah, yeah, yeah. or second year, but that boy yeah. could play, and he's and a clear upgrade over Andre let, Roberson. Let us let us just say that Melo is doing exactly what. We've, We've all been wanted him saying to do. Yeah. <laughs> that he should do for the last 10 years yeah. what Phil wanted him to do, what everybody wanted him to do, which is standing in the fucking corner and mm-hmm. just shooting the ball. And I think we've said this before. I don't know if we were even on the podcast, but if Melo doesn't dribble – oh, no. I was talking to my buddy Jamil about it. But if Melo doesn't dribble until there's five seconds left in the fourth quarter, if that's the <laughs> only time he dribbles the entire game is five seconds left, down by two, down by one, or game tied in the fourth quarter – Yeah. You have an elite team. Okay. The second he dribbles the ball, he automatically hurts your team. Well, I think they're figuring out that he doesn't have to do that. I think he's figuring out that he doesn't have to Finally, do that Finally, years later. But you know what what I mean, but he could have like... saved himself a lot of shit talk from everybody in New York City. All I'm saying is all you got to do is come off screens, pull. Yeah. All you got to stay in a corner, pull. And it's mathematical. I, I, was, I was breaking this down. If you shoot 50, because what he does is he takes hard twos, mm-hmm. right? So if you shoot 50%, from two, mm-hmm. right? And you take 10 shots. That's how many points? 10. 10 points. Yeah. If you shoot sorry. 40% Math. from three and you take 10 shots, 12. That's 12 points. Mm-hmm. So you need to shoot 
65%. You need to make seven out of ten twos to offset shooting 40% from three. Yeah. His game is mathematically incompatible with a high-scoring offense. Because mm, okay, he might saying. shoot 50% from twos if layups are involved, yeah. but not those hard-hitting. But you also have that the, uh, the, the ultimate outlier in Russell Westbrook where, like, Russell Westbrook's, like, the first player in the NBA that I've ever seen where he gets amazing stats, but to me, his stats really don't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, his shooting stats. Right. Like, if, st- if Russell is, like, two for, like, 30 in a game, he can still have a very good game and still possibly win you that game. Right. You know what I mean? Because he brings so much more. Like, he rebounds. He, bl- he plays defense. Yeah. He'll get his teammates involved. And he's not afraid to miss shots, which is a, you know, it's a Kobe-like thing. It's, it's like huge. a Kobe-like uh, mentality to have where it's Alpha. like some people miss four or five shots and they lose their confidence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're like, all right, I'm not going to, you know. I'll start getting the other team involved. Like, no, if Russ thinks it's a good shot, he's still shooting it, and he doesn't give a fuck. And he said he doesn't give a fuck. I want Russ to get a championship so fucking Me bad. too, man. As a fan, <laughs> Me just, too. And I didn't like Russ for a long time until, actually, the, the series they lost to the Warriors, everybody kept saying, Russ is playing differently. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. No, he's not. Mm-hmm. And he was. He's playing. A, he still got his things that people don't like, and I get it, but he's he's playing smarter. He's passing Dog. the ball a little more. That first finals and, that they went to, with the when they went against the Heat, he was the only one who showed up. Yeah, Katie, Katie was quiet. James Harden was a fucking ghost. ghost. And we yeah. forget but that before, Russ balled the fuck out. And we forget yeah. that when they lost Unflappable. to the Warriors, Katie mm-hmm. choked as well. Yes, I think did. his game seven was good, but his game five and six were terrible statistic. Like he shot like yeah. forty shots in one game, yeah. crazy numbers. Yeah. Nobody blames KD for that. Yeah. They all yeah. throw it at Russ. Yeah. KD yeah. left. KD didn't leave because Russ. They lost because KD also choked. Yeah. So don't and put it at Russ's feet and then yeah. leave. Yeah, I mean, maybe someone make the argument that Russ took too many shots. And I think KD took more enough. in Game Five, if not maybe. whatever. Fuck. Mm. Who gives a fuck? Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, who gives a fuck? All right, I, I got to get out here in two minutes, but you guys can keep going. But I, um, I just want to bring up one thing that I, th- I saw was interesting. LeBron was uh, playing. I forget which team that he was playing, but there was somebody in the stands in the front row who had a T-shirt and. Oh, they were they were playing Orlando. They're playing Orlando, and, and he had a T-shirt, and it was LeBron's wife and LeBron's mom and LeBron's body, but with Aaron Gordon's face on it. Mm. So Aaron Gordon, obviously the uh, power oh, forward for, yeah, Orlando, for Orlando Magic, Orlando Magic. Right. Yeah. made great improvements. Shout out to Aaron Gordon. Um, so it looks a little like Delonte. A little. <laughs> <laughs> them lights get my motherfuckers. <laughs> them lights get motherfuckers sliding. <laughs> Let's go. So uh, we gotta get Delonte on the podcast. Oh fuck, oh, he ain't doing shit. Let's get him. Let's find this. Check man. his bag before. I don't want to. Yeah, shot for, him. <laughs> for sure. We need metal detectors. Reverend Real comes. talk. But yes. um, anyway, so the guys in the front row wearing this shirt now, and it brought up an interesting, uh, you know, I think an interesting question, which is how much can the fans disrespect the players? Without one, the players saying anything back, because we know if the players say anything back to fans, they can be fine. Mm-hmm. So, what is this relationship? Are they there just to get cursed at these players? Is there a line that is drawn in what you can say or do to a certain player? Because I don't think players should be able to act out aggressively, but I also don't think that you should be able to disrespect a player's family. Like yeah, that. That, that's a, that's a little extra. I mean, here's the thing. No, yeah. no, one hundred percent agree. I I agree. But at the same time, I just think the athletes should be allowed to just say something back. Like, they should be able to acknowledge it. Because the fans, all they're doing, and, and I but guess But they that's, want the acknowledgement. That's, that's the problem. That's on the Amway Arena st- staff to be like, hey, like, that shirt's inappropriate. Like, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, they weren't doing nothing explicit. But it's yeah. like, all right, that's a little So here's the thing. If it was a true free market, right, mm-hmm. you'd let the fans do whatever the fuck they want. But mm-hmm. then you'd also let the players do what the fuck they want. Yeah. And then you'd have another, what is it, malice at the palace? Well, no. What, was it, what is that called? See, that's the other thing. Even what is it, what was Mouse at the Palace. So if yeah. you had another Mouse at the Palace, you know who's not going to talk any more shit? Everybody that was at the Palace. Yeah, that night. real talk. Because they, that's what a free market does. Yeah. It goes, Regulates. oh, you're going to... It yeah. regulates itself. It's yeah. like hockey. Hockey, you don't have dirty players because they get they knocked get the fight. fuck yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. So what you, what you have to do is make a decision. If the players can't say anything to the people in the stands, you have to also... Punish people in the stands for disrespecting player players. Mm. It's just uh, it's just unfair. If you're going to regulate one side, you got to regulate the other side. I hate this idea that fans can get away with anything because they're fans. It's or stupid. Whatever. It's crazy. 
It's crazy. Mm. That being said, if I paid four thousand dollars for a ticket, I'm talking all this shit about somebody. <laughs> there's mama. lines though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean you but would that's, do it with that's, Yeah, I mean there's there's a lines to yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not but... talking about people. I'm talking about Jose Calderon being slow and how I can yeah. bust his ass. Yeah. But I'm not gonna talk about his family. Yeah, you a bum. You not a bum. Your mom yeah. is so and so. You slow. Yeah. Yeah. Now nah, this dude is fucking your wife. Yo, that is just <laughs> that's crazy. Wild to say that's to somebody. Crazy. Too much. And they they feel too, too safe. Yeah. If they fit, you know what it is, and I disagree. <laughs> I'm not even gonna go. <laughs> but it's they feel too safe. That's what it is. They feel way too you'll safe. Text me later. Yeah, I'll text you later. I bet. Anyway, my Uber hopefully coming. Yo, uh, yo, I love you guys. Shout to Andrew for he's late. He's late as fuck so to this. Nice. Not only is he late to his pregame stretches and dribbles, son, he can be late it. to the game. Oh, not. geez. You got to hurry up, man. I got to hurry up, son, because I'm not be coming off their bench. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Go get uh, it. All right, bro. Yeah, yes, sir, for sure. Man. Alex, you but, want to finish up right there? All right. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's get Peace. this into it. But yeah, nah, man. Like, if you're a fan, you know what I mean? Like, you should be able to, like, say whatever you want, but, like, within reason. You know what I mean? Because... F- rewind a couple years, a couple months earlier, when that fan is like screaming at LeBron James or whatever, and LeBron screams back at him, is like, "Yo, is that your girlfriend over there?" He's like, yeah, "You should be so ashamed. Dope. You a bum." And, nah, 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 nah. So and it's dope. like, "All right, you got you got what you wanted. You got the attention, and now LeBron's gonna fucking embarrass you, and it's gonna be all over ESPN and That's, Sports I Center." I actually like, thought, yeah, I thought that was dope. I don't justice. like. It's I don't justice. like when we act like players can't do anything back. Then they're just yeah. getting bullied. Yeah, and you're the ones that we're the ones that pay. All of our money to watch these dudes do stuff, and mm. then you just can sit here and I don't know. I just don't like it. I just don't understand like why you spend that much money to like heckling. Fine, say what you want. Fine, like within reason. Like somebody should be able to call you a bum. You suck. You can't do this. You can't do this. like anything that has to do with what's going on yes. on the courts. Yes, should be fair game. Like yes. all these people that are just like, oh man, like you know, you gotta call. like if if you if you're over ten. I could call you anything under the sun that refers to you going over ten. Hell yeah, you, know you deserve I mean? it because you deserve it. But like having like mom and wife and come on, son, like that's you're coming to this dude's job, heckle him about his job. Mm-hmm. Don't make it some personal shit. I think Steve Kerr was saying in college, his dad was killed in wars like a POW, and people were like making fun of that, some crazy like wow. that. But people don't give a fuck, man. Wow, fans go too far, and that's why. When Kyrie screams, suck my dick to a fan, <laughs> or Ron Artest runs up in there because someone throws a beer in his face. I'm like, yo, good. Listen, Kyrie telling that fan to suck his dick was the greatest thing that happened to the Celtics season. This year, I'm man. telling you. They went like 14-0 and 0 after that. Kaz has shit. been calling for 30 for 30 about <laughs> the suck my dick moment since it happened. It saved the season. They had just lost Gordon Hayward. His yeah. had a freakish injury. They were like one in like four or whatever. And it's like, oh, Kyrie, where's LeBron? LeBron and Kyrie said, yo, suck my dick. And they won 14 games straight. Yeah, it's and then the he top proved to this guy why he should suck his dick. Yeah. You I mean, should hey, be a huge fan. Sometimes you got to tell a fan to suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of this, so this is actually perfect time to ask you. Um, it is back, and we haven't spoken about it yet. Well, yeah, he's we back, and he's played two games, and he's he's put up good numbers. He's looked damn good in those games, man. Like, it's, I'm surprised at how well he's fit in. I dog, already. I thought it would take games. But yeah, it hasn't seemed to. He fit right in. You know why? Because LeBron thrives with guards with no conscience. You know what I'm saying? Because he's the primary playmaker. Yeah. LeBron's the point. He's really the point he's guard the point. when it, yeah. when it when it goes comes all down to it. So like, and I said this early in the season, people thought I was crazy, or whatever. I'm like, a healthy Cavs squad, like the way that team is 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 constructed. I'm not ready to give like I'm not ready to just close my eyes and say yeah, Warriors got it. See, I still think they would need, and I think about I'm a like a I don't. I'm almost a LeBron stan at this point. Uh, I don't know how I 360 on this man so hard. <laughs> I was a massive stan, hated him his first two years in Miami, and then came back around. Back. <laughs> but I think about, like, what can they do with this? Like, almost like it's the Mavericks. Like, what can they do with, with this Brooklyn pick? What can they flip yeah. it to? What can they use? They have a first-round pick of their own this year? They have their own first-round pick, and what they have Brooklyn's pick. What can they use Brooklyn's that for? Yeah. And I still think they need another 3 and D guy along mm. with Crowder. Like, I think if they got Thomas Crowder and Avery Bradley, even though he'd already signed with the Pistons, yeah. I think that team would be better. And I think this team still might be better than the Kyrie. Cavs. Oh, no, I do think I, I said this early in the season. People called me nuts, but I'm like, yo, it, I yeah. like the way I'm not going to say like the, the, the record's going to be better or whatever like that. But I just like the way this team is constructed more than those past teams just because of the depth. Like Dwayne Wade's starting to get it as far as like being like the perfect like off the bench scorer. 
Um, you know, J.R. Smith obviously going to be do him. Tristan Thompson starting to come around. Um, you know, and it has looked like he's looked apart. Like you know, like he hasn't he hasn't had one of those big crazy it games yet, but you could see it's coming. And this is the most. Gosh, like this is like the most freedom he's had in the offense since what Sacramento? Yeah, where like he's not getting double teamed and like people aren't sh- like he's never gonna see a double team here. You can't. Ever. You, it's the dumbest thing in the world. The yeah. double team, Isaiah. Now let me ask you this: If is he as big of a defensive liability as everybody says? Yes. <laughs> yes okay, then is. do you still start? This sounds insane, maybe, but do you consider doing a mono thing with him and bringing bring him, him off, off the bench? The bench? I mean, I, I would consider it if, if Dwayne Wade wasn't, like, doing really well off the bench and, like, you know, being a, a pace controller and, you know, the way he scores. Like, I've never been a big fan of, like, how many points you score, right. but how you get your points right. and how you contribute to the team makes all the difference, you know? So when it comes to IT, he just – he's a spark that that starting lineup needed. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. like. I don't think the I don't think he he's needed on the bench as more as he's needed on the starting lineup, and because everybody you know obviously it's gonna be LeBron 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 when when you're coming up with a defensive scheme to stop the Cavaliers or try to stop the Cavaliers, but LeBron's such a smart basketball player like his scoring has never been the thing you got to stop with him right you got to stop LeBron from getting everyone involved because once that's happened it's over right because by the time the fourth quarter hits and everybody's an option now. You're not guarding LeBron one on one, and he's just as effective in the fourth quarter, and still as has as much energy in the fourth quarter that he does in the first quarter. So it's it's hard, man. Like I I like the way these Cavs are constructed. If Derrick Rose like is a semblance of his anything when he comes I back, think as we gotta a, get. I think we, I loved Derrick Rose, and my fear with Kawhi, yeah. which I, I meant to bring up when y'all were talking when we were talking about it, I feared Kawhi could be another Derrick Rose situation. Mm. I don't think he will. The hope is that. Uh, Pop is a completely different uh, with his minutes distribution than uh, Thibodeau was. Yeah, I think yeah. Thibodeau. Oh, still... obviously, anybody's better with yeah. minutes than Thibodeau. I think, I think I still wouldn't hire Thibodeau for that reason. Nah, he gave like all day. Like he played him with like a spinal tap or something. I mean, it's fucking crazy <laughs> yeah, like, what he does to his players. It's psychopath. crazy he hasn't seemed to learn. Yeah. But my point is, I I don't uh, I I don't know. I don't think Derrick Rose is enough. I don't think he's coming back. And I don't. I still think they need one more defensive piece I to so. compete with the Warriors. I mean, I I think. I think the trade deadline will bring something. What do you, what would you think would be a good move? Man, I was thinking about this the other day, and I'm only hoping it doesn't happen because I'm a Knicks fan, but, like, the perfect complimentary piece to that team would be, like, a Courtney Lee. Where, like... Oh, okay, exactly. 3 yeah, yeah. and D, yeah. super savvy, gets his points where he can, but super effective, like, 14... I think he's averaging, like, 13 a game or something like that. He's the per- like He'd be a perfect player on that team. It's, it's funny we're both going to go with our hometown teams because I was thinking Wesley Matthews. Well, Another guy, yeah, perfect, you know, just lock-up guy, knockdown shooter. Like, you got to get – if you want to play with Braun, you got to be a knockdown shooter. And on top of that, it's like, well, I kind of – I feel like somebody's going to come – like, there's always those veterans that get picked up at the end of the year that get right. cut or released right. or somebody. So there's going to be, like, somebody and, like, is like – I think it could be Vince Carter. <laughs> like, you think Vince Carter can still play D, though? Yeah. Like it's cra- like if you watch like they just they just beat the Cavs a couple days ago and like Vince had like twenty points. Or something no, he like had a that. real throwback like, game. It was crazy, a crazy throwback game. And it's like yo, Vince can kind of still get it done. Like last year when he was on the free market and like he was still playing really well. I was like, man, I hope he goes to the Spurs. Like I hope he goes to a team where right, he can right. get a championship and be a contributing player because he could still play really well. Like in the right system, right situation. Like he's a very he's still a very effective player. If somehow the Kings find it in their heart to to release him after the after the All Star break and be like, hey, go sign where you want to sign with, if he ends up on the Cavs, watch out. You think out. that's enough? Watch out. I think he's the perfect guy, like the perfect veteran. You know, you only need you for this stretch run. You're coming off the bench. You're doing all this type of shit. And this is ridiculous, by the way. This stat line. You lead the team in everything. Uh, he, dog, <laughs> not only does he lead the team in everything, there were two finals in a row where he led the Cavs and Warriors in everything. In every step. It, it's fucking unbelievable that anybody doesn't give him the credit of being the best player in the league. Yeah. Still. Still. 15 Still. years in. It's ridiculous. Like, if you don't... if it, it's It's mind-boggling that the only teams that have beaten him 
are all time great teams. Like yeah. outside of like the Mavericks, maybe if that's wanna, his one blip. That was his one blip on the radar. But like the teams that have beaten him in the finals are all time great. All time yeah. great. Yeah. You know, it's 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 amazing how he's still this effective this this late in his career. He looks like he can go for another ten. To be honest. Yeah, I hope he does. I hope he does too, man. He's oh, another yeah. dude I just I still root for. And I would still love to see him get another championship. And I don't know what – I still think they need one more piece. Yeah. Uh, to me, Vince Carter scares me just because you watch way more basketball than me. But he's mm. in his 40s, and I just don't think – He's against, the fine age, bro. At this point, they're not playing against the league. They're playing against the Warriors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that – or maybe the maybe the Celtics because the, the ass beating they took last week, I was a little <laughs> disconcerted. It was a little disconcerting. For yeah. Me. Like, I'm, start, I'm starting to lose a little faith in, faith in the Celtics, to be honest. Really? I'm starting to lose a little faith in them. I mean, I love – Fucking love, uh, what's his face? What's the rookie's name? Jason Tatum. Yeah. Love him. Yeah. Big Jalen Brown fan. Love Kyrie. I think they're going to be good, but it's like the more you watch them, you're just like, they're not ready for playoff LeBron yet. Playoff see, LeBron playoff is LeBron so is, different. It's a whole different Bron. You're asking these young kids, you're asking Jalen Brown second year, uh, Jason Tatum rookie year to guard playoff LeBron. You You need to stop him from going to the finals. Yeah. That's a different beast yeah. than uh, we're playing in October. No, yeah. maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Next year will be crazy to see because they're probably going to have the number two, three overall pick and, and Gordon, Gordon Hayward. Hayward. It's and Jason Tatum in his second year and Jalen Brown in his third year. Yeah. Going to be fucking crazy. This year might not be. It might be a rep. Uh, but I don't know. I just I still think they need one more piece of the Cavs. And I, I always so. I in my mind I'm always wondering what what should they do? What should they shop this Brooklyn pick for? I mean, people have been talking to Anthony Davis. If that's a possibility, if New Orleans would even consider that for a second, I would do that so fucking fast. That's ridiculous. If, if New Orleans does this, then, like, that's when, like, I, I got to be David Stern and be like, yo, basketball rules, basketball reasons, this whole thing. Listen, though, um, if you gave both first and Kevin Love, it's still not a good deal, but it's not the worst deal I've ever seen. Because he's going to walk. He's going to walk. And you don't want to get And I don't nothing, blame him for walking. You know, so it's like, it's, it's, it's crazy to me, man. Like, I don't know if they're going to get Boogie. I mean, if they're going to get Brow, but I've heard that. I've heard uh, Paul George talks. I've heard a lot of people, but like I don't think they're going to give up on Paul George because Thunder's starting to turn it around now. So I think that was like much more of a early season thing. And um, I don't know, man. I could really, really see them just holding on to that pick. And like I think that's the bargaining chip for LeBron to stay. To be honest. Yeah. I, well, I've been and I've been meaning to ask this. I think that is the bar- they need to get a fucking star for him. Yeah. You, you either got a star or like the way this draft is setting up and how loaded it looks again. Yeah. Like as good as this draft class is right now, like you can get a Trey Young, you get a DeAndre Aiden. I want to talk to you get, about Trey Young later. Oh yeah. No, nah, Trey Young is the real fucking deal. Well, I guess bro. we just talk now. Is he going number one overall? I don't think he goes number one, simply because you know. So, GMs is always scared to take guards number one that but, aren't but are mega still, athletic. Because Steph Curry, it's like, that's I what I'm hate saying. Him, but yeah. he changed the game for, for the foreseeable future. Exactly. To have the best player since the guy at that game since the guy who changed the game. Yeah. Yeah. How does he and, not and go this number is, one? This is like the way the way the NBA is set up, there's no like there's no way Trey Young isn't at the very least a very good NBA player. Yes. Maybe he's a star. Maybe he's a superstar. But the way the the way the league is just gun, fun and gun, and you're not nobody unless you have like a guard that could do the things that he does so well. It's like, how do you not? Like, I mean, are him you gonna and LeBron on the floor at the same time would be unfair? Ridiculous. Unfair. Ridiculous. Like this, this guy has in the gym range like stuff. He has court vision. Like he's pretty good athlete. You know what I mean? Like, and he's 19. Well, let me ask you this about the Brooklyn pick, though, before leaving Trey Young real quick. Yeah, yeah. How that I, it's going to be a top ten pick, probably. Yeah. But are there are there legitimately ten really good players? Or yeah. Is it that deep of a draft? It's it, it's looking pretty deep. There's there's Marvin Bagley out of Duke. There's Michael Porter Jr. if he if he gets healthy and 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 does his thing. Um. There's DeAndre Aiden. There's uh the big dude from Texas, uh for guys name. Yeah, he seems real raw. He, but there's that Lithuanian where the fuck. Uh Luka Doncic, Doncic another yeah. who's a fucking beast as well. Like there's I just named maybe seven, but I'm pretty sure like, you know, Brooklyn I don't think Brooklyn's gonna be I don't think that Brooklyn pick is gonna be like number ten. 
Like it might be like six, seven. I keep watching five. them in the standings, like assuming they're gonna fall off. After D'Angelo Russell got hurt, I was like, all right, yeah. definitely, and they just don't. And this oh, is, Brooklyn's fun to watch. They, their coach is a great coach. I don't know who this guy is, but he we need to give. Oh, this guy Kenny some Atkinson. No, nah, Kenny Atkinson is the he is the uh, he was allegedly the brainchild behind Linsanity. Like, really? That's why Jeremy Lin went to sign with him. Like when wow. he became the head coach, you know what I'm saying? So like when he used to be assistant coach for the Knicks when they had Dan Tony, we run the same system, mm. you know, and that's what got Jeremy Lin popping. So it's like, you know, Kenny Atkinson's a hell of a coach, man, and uh, I, they compete. They got this kid, uh, Spencer Dinwiddie or whatever from Brooklyn, yeah. and he's like, I've never heard of him in my life. But every time I look up, it's like I see his name on a box score. I see his name on like the the ticker on ESPN, like that he had like 20 points, 25 points, like, and they don't get blown out. Like, right. they don't get slapped by anybody. They compete in every single game. So, it's like, do you trade that pick? Like, do you think they're bad enough to keep it? I don't. First of all, it's the most Dan Gilbert thing ever and the most <laughs> Danny Danny Ainge thing ever. Yeah. That they got, that the, the Celtics held on to the Sacramento LA pick and Gilbert got the Brooklyn pick. Yeah. Because it's just. It, That's ridiculous. It's going to be, the Sacramento pick is going to be a top three pick in mm. this ridiculous class. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I would consider, you've got. Trey Young could be a, an all-time great. Any of these guys could be an all-time yeah, great. Yeah, you yeah. definitively have an all-time great who's still playing at an all-time great level. So I would trade that pick if I could get another like superstar type player yeah. or really t- top 10 player. I would trade that pick without thinking to keep LeBron. Yeah, like are you are you willing to give up five like what you're asking yourself is like are you willing to give yourself five more years of LeBron to be like be patient with Marvin Bagley, be patient with Michael Porter, be yes. patient with these guys. Absolutely. Okay. All Absolutely. Right. That makes sense. I would trade. I would trade for if you get Anthony Anthony Davis, and that's the best the Pelicans can do. I would do that in a fucking heartbeat because mm. they they would still get for, you know, a great player. Kevin Love. I, everybody else loves. I don't. I don't fucking get it. He but, fits. Uh, he fits. He's just the weakest. How are you a power forward and you're that weak? <laughs> I've seen him post up every two guards. Yeah. He can't fucking move them. Yeah. I no, legitimately I mean, wonder if he could move me in the post. Bro, he lost a shit ton of weight, man. That he lost too much. He got too good looking. He got too. He got too sexy, man. Yeah, like, you can't get that sexy. You power forward. <laughs> you can't post up. Dog is done. Yo, like I've seen some meme on on Twitter, but like probably Alex could pull it up. There's like a meme of like. Somebody put a, a four pictures of Kevin Love together. It's like it's hard to believe this is all the same guy. Right. Like there was like one of him with shaggy hair, one of him being super heavy at UCLA. Yeah. There's one of him being super skinny at uh in, in Cleveland, and uh like one of him in high school when he was like breaking backboards and shit. Like he was like fucking baby Shaq. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like this is all the same guy. Dog, like, I it's... think he got too skinny. Yeah. He needs to be a little fatter. <laughs> post up a little bit. You don't got to run in LeBron's offense. You just you either camp out in the three or you go get rebounds. That's it. That's yeah. all you got to do. You need that extra meat on your bones. I bro. would trade him for if, I mean, the Paul George trade that almost happened would have been, I would have done that in a fucking second. That was, an, again, an amazing trade. Mm-hmm. Everybody keeps saying you don't give up uh, Kevin Love. I would give up Kevin Love if there was a, a good piece. Mm. I'd three and D guy, I'd consider giving him up right there. <sighs> But then that's another half a season of trying to fit in another superstar with another superstar. No, yeah, chemistry and, issues are always a thing. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. you know. They finally seem to have figured it out, so I guess you can't do it now. But, I think uh, so. Yeah, I would. Hold on to the pick. Bet your future on another, hopefully, you win the lottery and you move up and get in the top three or top one. And maybe, maybe you draft another LeBron James, another guy you could build your, your, your uh, you know, franchise around. When LeBron finally I don't goes to LA. see why he would go to LA though. <laughs> Everybody keeps saying he's gone. Why the Lakers? Someone nah, please explain know. this to me logically. I mean, people are saying like he has like a lot of businesses out Who gives there. Who the fuck? He got two houses. He out has there. a home out there. Like his kid, like he's looking for schools out there and shit. So it's like people are like, oh. Like, I don't Ugh. understand the school thing. I, I from what I remember, he was just talk giving a talk at a school. Mm. No, apparently he was like looking for schools for like his kids, like his uh, you know, who's who are like highly ranked basketball players in their own right. You know I just I mean, don't to... get why, if you want championships and you're chasing the ghost of Jordan, mm-hmm. like everybody says, if that's his his for, his foremost focus, the Lakers ain't ready, dog. Mm-hmm. You're not taking out the Warriors. No, you're not. I mean, I like Kuzma, but like you're not, you know, you're not ready for that. And I guess if he's if he's if that's his goal, if his goal is to chase down the Warriors and eventually chase down Michael Jordan, yeah, you're not, not doing it. Dude, I'm not, not saying you have to stay in Cleveland, but you're, I don't think you're going to the Lakers. Nah. Nah. We talked one day, once about like where else he could go. I don't know if you were here when mm. we did that talk, but like what team? If you could put LeBron on any team, what team would you have him go? Just to say, all right, this is where he's gonna fit the best and win the most, whatever. Any team? Yeah. 
man. Uh, San Antonio. That's what I was saying. San Antonio or Houston? San Antonio, just because I would love to see him with a great coach. Yeah. And Kawhi would be great for him also. But... That's the one thing. Like, I'm, he's you're talking about 3 and D guys that he needs. Yeah. There's no better 3 and D guy than Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi, Danny Green is great. Yeah. Like, I mean, that team would be insane. I would love to watch either for that reason or Houston just to see him in a free-flowing offense where he's not the entire offense. Oh, that'd be fucking where he's crazy, not too. You know what I mean? Where you just watch LeBron just run up and down the court. Like like in the early Miami days where it was just fun and gun, you oh, know, like yeah. that was super fun and like James Harden, Chris Paul, Anderson, Gordon. But that Antoni. team didn't have as as brilliant of an offense as no. Mike Antony can create. No, not at all. But it was you know it was still kind of fun to watch. Bron that, get on his Magic Johnson shit and just yeah, really like run the show like that. It'd be the exact same thing as KD going to Golden State to me though. Where it's just like yeah. you're, just, you're just really going to the most loaded. <laughs> get out of my face. Fucking what's that? I think Stephen A. Smith was like bugging on him about that. I was like, yo, we're really still talking about this. You're the best player in the world. Make it happen where you are. Like, we hate having to do the fucking, oh, where's he going this time? Stephen A., like, he got a little weird personal thing with LeBron I can't figure out. I don't I, get it. Yeah. I, Drop it, dog. It's weird. I think it's because of like, I actually think it's because of like, you know, LeBron has a weird thing with ESPN in general on first take. Really? I think so. Like, LeBron doesn't really like he'll do yeah like if you ever notice like lebron when he talks to espn it's a very special sit down yeah, yeah. In, like somebody's it's a sunday house conversation it's a sunday conversation, it's a sunday conversation. Always exactly. a sunday conversation. Like, you never just be like yeah lebron's gonna be on first take today he's gonna be on sports center but he's, he's lebron on... you don't have to maybe that's why Kyrie went to first take just yeah, as an extra exactly this is super funky but like brady will do sports center like aaron Rodgers will do sports he'll do like scott van pelt at night or some shit like that but like lebron's like nah i'm good I'm straight. Like, I don't need y'all. Unless I'm sitting with, like, Rachel Nichols on a Sunday afternoon during, like, like Sunday mass and shit. Like, that's the only time he does it. Rachel, people love Rachel Nichols. I think she's really good. She Rachel gets, Nichols she is gets amazing. Everybody. She's the shit. She's amazing at what she does. Amazing at what she does. I don't know what makes a journalist good, but funny Stephen A story, actually. My uh, mm. my best friend wanted to be a sports writer before newspapers completely crumbled. Mm-hmm. And he was going to this, like, journalism boot camp or some, like, weird shit they were doing. Okay. And I think it was in Philly. So they brought in Stephen A. Smith, and they started grilling him. He's like, where did I go to college? And then nobody knew because he was fucking Stephen A. Smith, and this was 10 <laughs> years ago. And then he was like, if I was your boss, I would have all of you fired. <laughs> you should know where you're something. And they were like, he was a surprise, first of all. So no one even but knew Nobody knew you were in. coming, motherfucker. Second of all, you Stephen A. Smith. I don't give a fuck where you went to school, dog. I don't got a, you don't got a football card. Oh, you man. don't got a fucking rookie card with your stats on your back. Get the fuck out of my face. Yo, yo, that's crazy. I mean, not for nothing. Like, there's all right. Like, I could see why. Like, if you're a journalism student, which which I was, I didn't. I don't know. What, I don't know what school Stephen A. Smith <laughs> went to. But at the same time, it's like, why are you? What? What? Was, what does that gain for me? Yeah. Like, in if you're if you're my boss, like I've had bo- I've had tons of bosses. I would never know what any of them went to college. I don't know ever. where anyone. I don't know what anyone does for a living. If your job profession is more than one word, I don't know. <laughs> if it's not doctor or lawyer, I don't know. Or but, athlete or comedian or actor, I'm just like I don't know. You speak in some other language to me. That's crazy. It's the same with journalists. I don't give a fuck where you went to school. Can you write well? Can you not? Are you eloquent? Are you not? It's real simple. That's crazy. Has anybody given a fuck where any journalist went to school? I mean, like, I feel like there's, like, certain schools, like Northwestern. And that's like, where my best friend went, so yeah. I know that's good. And I've heard exactly. Missouri is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you went to Northwestern, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, you're 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 legit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. It's like playing football at the U. Like in, in the dorkiest possible In the dorkiest way. possible way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I think, is, you got time? Yeah, you want to wrap this up? Yeah, let's wrap this up, buddy. Yeah, man. Uh, shout out to everybody supporting Flagrant 2. Um, that's a show. I never really do the ending. Uh, Andrew usually Yo, does this thing. Anything we want to plug? So, uh, yeah, we got a sh- we got a live show, with Highline Ballroom, uh, February seventh. February seventh. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of special guests. Doors open at six. Show starts at eight o'clock. Get your tickets on highlineballroom.com, ticketweb.com, all that good stuff. Uh, check out the Russell Rap Podcast and the MLW Radio Network on um, Saturdays. Each and every Saturday, with my boy Emilio Sparks. And uh, listen to me on Satori Radio each and every Monday through Friday from 9 to 12. As the busiest dude in the industry. Facts. I also <laughs> am only plugging the Flagrant 2 live show. Yes, sir. Uh, I may be out in L.A. at the end of the month. 
I'll uh, let you guys know if I am. I'll let you know whatever shows I'm doing out there. But in the meantime, keep supporting the podcast, man. We appreciate everybody who listens. Come to the live show. Tell your friends about Flagrant 2. This is a fucking movement. Yes, sir. Let's make our fans an army. Yes, just sir. Just like my radio station in Dallas I still <laughs> listen to. And uh, God bless y'all, man. We Thank need y'all, y'all to come out in full force for full verse 7th, man. Dog. Like, let's make a statement. Also, I just think it's funny. Let me point this out. Andrew was here and you were gone. We didn't talk a second about space. <laughs> Not a fucking second. <laughs> then, and I remember the same thing. I listened after I left once or twice early and you and, and, you and Andrew sat down. Uh-huh. It's completely about sports. Yeah. You are, you are the I'm, only I'm thing holding, holding this podcast together. <laughs> Other than that, it would just be Andrew and me talking about nothing shooting the shit. in the most flagrant and controversial <laughs> way possible and getting kicked off of everything immediately. God bless you, Cass. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate that, Akash. It really means a lot course, to me, man. man. So uh, shout out to everybody who's supporting the show, and uh, we will see you next week. Take yeah. it easy. God bless you.